Oakland, Alameda County Coliseum, December 21, 1974, the way it was. Oakland has just kicked off to Miami. 89, Nat Moore swinging to his left. Down the left sideline, he's got open space. The speedster, the fastest man by far on the Miami team, goes untouched. 89 yards, touchdown. Quickly, Miami leads by a score of 7 to nothing. But Oakland, a powerhouse, high-scoring team with the pinpoint precision passing of Kenny Stabler, strikes back in the second quarter. Stabler to Charlie Smith. The score tied at 7-7. Seven to seven. Moving ahead to the third quarter. And with Miami leading 10 to 7, Stabler strikes again. In the corner to Boletnikov, 25, incredible catch. That made it 14 to 10, Oakland. But Bob Greasy was not to be denied either. Throwing long to Paul Warfield, touchdown, extra point block. And so Miami led 16 to 14. Once again, Stabler going to work. His favorite target, Cliff Branch, the speedster out of Colorado, has it. Apparently down, Touch too late by Henry Stuckey and Branch goes downfield. Touchdown, and so Oakland takes a 21 to 16 lead. The Dolphins worry to see Fernandez's face, but the Dolphins, a tremendous football team, fighting back. And now, Benny Malone, number 32, will not be denied. He first pass one tackle on another, and still another goes in for the touchdown, and so Miami takes the lead again, 26 to 21. But Oakland, with Kenny Stabler hitting Boletnikov, first for 18, then for 20 yards, famous for his two-minute drill attack, brings the Raiders downfield, hits Frank Pitts, an incredible catch there, five-yard gain. The clock says 35 seconds. A frantically worried John Shula. Now, almost the last play of the game, going down, Stabler waffles the ball in the air. Somehow, Clarence Davis, 28, catches it. The Oakland Raiders win 28-26. They go at it again today.
Well, that's Shula on the one side. The coaching opponent, John Madden, on the other. Slimmed down by a mere 40 pounds. Perhaps the most unheralded coach in the league, widely characterized as a mere puppet for, in effect, the general manager and part owner, Al Davis. But in truth, nothing of the sort. A determined leader who should get credit when the team wins and who should be criticized if he deserves it when the team loses. Thus, the two coaches. Now, for some further analysis, let's bring in the gift, Frank Gifford, and let him talk about Miami on the offense. Well, Howard, we mentioned some of the injuries that possibly will hurt the Miami Dolphins. They have some mighty fine football players, too. They're coming off their best preseason ever, at least in terms of rushing. Now, that seems odd because Larry, Larry Zonka is gone. But Norm Boulash, Don Nottingham, Mercury Morris, Benny Malone, they picked up the slack. But even though they're talking like they can run the football, you still get the feeling that quarterback Bob Greasy is going to have to have his best year, and he's going to have to throw the ball for Miami to once again win this division. Well, that means it's time for Spanky Harris. Spanky, how would you defense Bob Greasy? Well, Univac, I think he summed it up. They, they, they've been running the ball in the preseason because they know that they have to run the ball in order to maintain that kind of offense that they've had with Zonka. As far as the, the, the uh, league opener is concerned, I don't know. I don't know if they can run against Oakland. Oakland knows that. They're, they're not uh, scared of uh, a Zonka in the middle, so I think they'll loosen up, and they're, they're going to think that uh, Greasy's going to throw the ball more. I think Greasy's going to have to throw the ball more, Frank. Now, what about Oakland and Kenny Stapler? Howard, in my estimation, Kenny Stabler, well, if he isn't the best quarterback in football, he's certainly approaching it. They say you have to spend five years to be the top quarterback. He's really only been a starter for two years, and he is super. He has some great receivers. We saw them in the highlights of the playoff game, Branch and Bolitnikoff. Stabler, if you give him a little time, he will just burn the daylights out of you. He is something else. All right, Spanky, how do you defense Kenny Stabler? Well, how do you defense an open offensive football team that's terrific? I don't know. Uh, Miami's playing with injuries. I think they'll go to a blitz uh, defense that usually kind of compensates for a lack of uh, uh, defensive personnel, and I think they'll go strictly uh, to a blitzing game tonight. We saw it in the preseason game where they were rushing their uh, safeties and the little guys scatting through the line, so they may go into a real blitzing situation. Thank you, gentlemen. Coming up, Oakland against Miami in the Orange Bowl. We'll be back in just a minute. We as professional broadcasters know that solid state equipment is reliable. The XL100 solid state television set reflects that reliability. That was one TV expert. What about others? What color TV do more of these TV experts own? RCA, right down the line. Think about it. The RCA XL100 means reliability to me. If it isn't RCA, it isn't XL100. scoring play by that New York Life Insurance team. Let's see the instant replay. Look at those New York Life pros blocking out Jenks' money problems. <laughs> Stopping his retirement worries. And there he is, reaching his goal. Jenks got financial security. New York Life made it happen. Where the name of the game is life, there's New York Life. This display symbolizes the hundreds of batteries and the full range of power systems made by EverReady. And of them all, this is our best all-purpose power system, the EverReady Alkaline Power Cell. Now that doesn't mean it's right for everyone, but for a calculator, electronic flash, things that really put a strain on a battery, you can't find a longer-lasting power system than EverReady Alkaline Power Cells. EverReady wants you to know. Last year, I introduced you to Mike McMahon, a Boy Scout whose great moment came when he rescued his family from their burning house. Through your one pledge to United Way, you made millions of great moments possible for Scouts across the nation, and they'd like to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you. This is Bob Greasy, the Miami Dolphin, saying, thanks to you, it works for all of us. Thank you. over Miami. A brilliant moon shining here in Miami. We have had scattered showers as it shines down on a jam-packed Orange Bowl, where tonight the Miami Dolphins kick their 1975 season off against the Oakland Raiders. And there it is. It was not sold out on Friday. However, 
It is tonight. 80,000 people on hand to watch these two teams who last met last December when they were in the AFC playoff together, won by Oakland in the final 26 seconds. And Howard, we talked about that game, but there are still many who say it was one of the finest ever. It had been billboarded, as you know, Frank, as the real Super Bowl game. It didn't turn out that way. The only one who reckoned with Pittsburgh was you, since you picked the Steelers all the way to win it all. But certainly it was one of the finest games within memory in the National Football League. And if we can have anything like that tonight, as I said earlier, we'll be in good shape for our opening. Dropping deep, Freddie Solomon, number 86 for Miami, back there along with Mercury Morris. Kicking off for Oakland is Ray Guy, and we're underway in the Orange Bowl. It will be Mercury Morris who lets it bounce, and it bounds out of bounds. Going out of bounds, it will go back and will be kicked once again from the 30-yard line. Don Shula, an incredible record here at Miami. As Howard mentioned at the top of the show, he is going to have a tremendous job for him. He's lost a lot of players other than Zonka Kick and Warfield. Nick Bonacani is not there anymore. Manny Fernandes, the great safety man. Dick Anderson out for the season. Bob Hines is out. There's John Madden. He too has injury problems. Yeah, but he's slimmed down an awful lot. I don't think he's worried about his injuries. He's worried about his waistline. I don't think he's going to get your clothing award this year, Alex. No, he's still uh, looking pretty dapper, yeah. John Madden. Great he, looks, he looks bad in expensive clothes, that guy. Does. <laughs> <laughs> and a much more brilliant coach than you might suspect. He has done a great job with the Raiders, along with managing general partner Al Davis. That's true, and a very engaging guy with a great sense of humor. All right, Giff, we're about ready to go and now. You're looking at Mercury Morris. A couple of years ago, he was definitely the deep threat for the Miami Dolphins. He's coming off a bad year. And Ray Guy rips one again. This time, he puts it through the end zone. It'll be a touchback, a big kick by Ray Guy. So the Miami Dolphins will begin operation from their own 20-yard line. They will have at quarterback Bob Grazy. Bob Grazy has taken the Dolphins to the playoffs for five straight years. He's in there with setbacks Mercury Morris, number 22, and Don Nottingham, number 36. The wide receivers, Nat Moore, he's the deep threat, number 89, and Howard Twilley. Howard Twilley has caught one pass in preseason. Hampered by injuries, Jim Mandich is the tight end. He is the big threat, as I see it, for the Dolphins tonight. The offensive line, a veteran one anchored by Jim Langer at center. The first play from scrimmage. This is Morris, dipping to the outside, and he could, oh, and just tripped up over the 35, going down at the 39, and had he been able to get around that corner, he was gone. He has great speed, a 19-yard pickup, first down. Mercury Morris only gained 214 yards last year after coming off big 1,000-yard years in 73 and 72, hampered by injuries, problem times because he felt he was mistreated a little bit but he says he's ready to play he had a great preseason with over 200 yards first down again for Miami now at the 39 yard line coming towards you Howard Twilley Morris again over the right side gets out for a couple of yards over the 40 to the 41 yard line no. Notice, fellas, a lot of the players are wearing sneakers because it's wet down there. Alex, what's that front well, that four? Well, that front four's been together a long time. It's Tony Klein, 84, and, of course, the University of Mars himself, Otis Sistrick, number 60. Art Toms has been around for a long time, number 80. And Horace Jones, I think, is kind of one of the un underrated ball players on that ball club, number 82. Watch him move. Calvin Carver's in there, too, Alex, and he, of course, is replacing Art Toms, the regular, at the right defensive tackle. And Gracie again, now facing a second down and eight. Just in the way from the Orange Bowl in Miami. Just over the 41 and getting the call is Nottingham. He fumbles and battling for the ball and coming up with it is number 84, Tony Klein. And a Miami Dolphin was lying right alongside of the ball. He did not see it. And Oakland gets their first turnover, something that they major in during the course of the season. We were talking about, you were talking about Calvin Corver, the guy who just replaced uh, Art Toms, who's got a pulled muscle. He just did a good job up front. He straightened the center up and he caused that fumble. And no one could block him. And he was just a, really a big bull of strength in there. 
Take note as Oakland goes on the offense with great field position. The center will be number 50, Dave Dalby. The first time in the history of the Oakland Raiders, Jim Otto, now the business manager, will not be the Oakland center. Quarterback Ken Stabler with setbacks, number 34. Harold Hart and Marv Hubbard, the big fullback, number 44. Hubbard gets the call. Finds a hole on the right side, makes a couple of more strictly on his own inside the 35 to the 36, a gain of four. The wide receivers are Fred Bolitnikoff. He's number 25. What a deadly receiver he is. Over 450 receptions in his career. Cliff Branch, the great speedster on the left side, 60 receptions last year, 13 touchdowns. Bob Moore is the tight end, but he'll alternate a lot with Dave Casper, and there is the offensive line. Dave Dalby at center, anchoring that line, as Howard mentioned, replacing... Jim Otto, who has been there up until tonight, every game open play. Second down and six. Stabler goes to Blitnikoff, is complete. Blitnikoff had what appeared to be the first down. He stepped back as Bob Matheson laid a hit on, and he could have lost the first. Of course, the, the Dolphins front four has guys that have been hanging together for a long time. Vern Den Herter, who I can't pronounce his name, and if I could, I'd, you know, I'd use him once in a while. Is number 83. Randy Crowder, number 74. Don Reese, 76. And, of course, Phil Stanfield, who I think uh, game in, game out, he's probably their best defensive lineman, number 84. Don Shula on the sidelines. Into the lineup for the Oakland Raiders. Their second tight end on a third down, perhaps less than a yard. Ball resting just inside the 29 of Miami. Dave Casper's in there, number 87, along with Bob Moore. Stabler, the quarterback, coming off a great year. Hubbard gets the call, and Hubbard, the big fullback, 235 pounds of him, gets the first down. He gets the first down, and Alex, you said those guys in the defensive line have been together a long time, which is usually true, but not tonight because of the absence of Fernandez and Hines. Instead, Don Reese and Randy Crowder, two young ones are in there. They may actually better the Miami pass rush, but the defense against the rush is something else. Again, the Miami linebackers, veterans, Mike Colin moved to the middle. 57-59, Bill Swift. The first and 10 for Oakland at the 26-yard line of Miami. Stabler dropping and looking. It's a tremendous rush. Steps away from the charge of number 74, Randy Crutter. But it was enough to force a six-yard loss for Oakland. I, Stabler with a tremendous rush. I had just mentioned that the two young ones might actually better the Miami pass rush, and there was an evidence. 74 crowd are getting in first, and Don Reese, the number one draft choice a year ago, finishing up the job. But again, their ability to defense the run will have to be seen against the powerhouse ground game of the Raiders tonight. Giff? Second down. Second down and 16. The ball at the 32-yard line. Blitnikoff, France, both to the left side, but the goal, ball goes to Hubbard. And Miami is fired up as John Andrews is in there now, a rookie from Oregon State. Well, he's had an interesting background, Giffer. Andrews played Canadian football. He played in the World Football League, came into Miami, a free agent. He had originally been drafted by Detroit, which gave up on him. Shula liked what he had, and he's going to get a lot of work tonight. And he comes out now as the pass is anticipated by Miami. Miami. In comes Jarris White. He's number 41. They'll go into their prevent defense. Third down and 14. The ball just over the 30-yard line. Stabler opens up his tight end. Firing, and it's complete to Cliff Branch. Cliff Branch, the uh, little 5'11", 170-pounder out of Colorado, gives Oakland a clutch first down. And, of course, that's a trademark of Kenny Stabler, as all NFL fans know. He's a pinpoint precisionist with the pass. He's a patient quarterback. He doesn't often go to the bomb, though his arm has become sufficiently strong for him to do it if he wants to. Oakland operates in the passing game primarily in a 15 to 17 yard range, which was the case just then. Kenny Stabler, 57% average last year. He threw 26 touchdowns. He just completed a key third down pass to Branch for the first down. Now he hands off to Banizak. Banizak over the right side. 
Pete Banizak, the veteran, 10 years out of the University of Miami. Banizak is still with the team because he's good on the special teams. He represents the problem presented by the 43 rather than 47-man roster. Number 23, Charlie Smith, no longer with the club, was a better runner, but wasn't strong enough to play on the special teams. Net result, Banasek got a light. Same thing happened in the case of Morris Bradshaw, who's with the team, instead of Frank Pitts, because Bradshaw is good in the special teams. Yep. On second down and 12. Fabler with the time. Gets it away to the big tight end, Bob Moore. Moore, very close to the first down. It'll depend where they mark the ball. A 12-yard pickup. And referee Jim Tunney tells us it's just short. 8-19, remaining in the first quarter from the Orange Bowl of Miami. No score. Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell and Spanky Alex <laughs> Harris as we open our regular season with a beauty. Oakland and Miami and what classics they've had. Short yardage. The two tight ends are in. Casper and Moore for Oakland. Hubbard, as you would suspect, gets the call, gets the first down. Down to the two-yard line, leaping over the blocks of Dave Dalby, George Beeler, and Gene Upshaw. Of course, you know, you're wondering about Mike Cohen, who has to fill in for the, one of the greatest all-time middle linebackers. Uh, what's his name, Budovac? Nick Bonacani. Uh, what number is he? 85. Thank Not you, to be seen for the rest of the year because of the 43-man rule. He'd be ready to play in three weeks otherwise, but Shula had to fill the gap. Credit Banizak with that first down for Oakland. Hubbard is on the bench. We don't know why. We'll check it out. Banizak hurtling in the end zone for the touchdown. Pete Banizak, who did not play hardly at all in preseason. A mere 73 yards rushing. Scores Oakland's first touchdown for 1975. Good offensive line in front of the Oakland Raiders. They protect well for Kenny Stabler. They block well for their running backs. Beeler and Upshaw, two excellent guards along with Shell and Vela. Two fine tackles. Now George Blanda has just set a new NFL record. He's playing his 211th consecutive game and he is attempting to kick his 1,920th point. Which he does. The grand old man of the Oakland Raiders, 48 years old, puts the Raiders out in front with the conversion of 7 to nothing. We'll be back. This moment is devoted to all the grandmas in the world. The women with more love than you can hold in your arms at one time. And to the little people who make the regal title of grandma all possible. with your children just across town, you're lucky. But if your special friend is across the country, you're still only half a day away when you fly the Boeing 747. Go. Get together sometime soon. There's a reception committee that believes you're the most important passenger on that plane. Grandma. Boeing. Getting people together. blimp Mayflower hovering over the Orange Bowl, a jam-packed Orange Bowl here in Miami, Florida. As you see, the Oakland Raiders used up five minutes and two seconds in their scoring drive. Ray Guy set the kickoff. He'll kick deep to Freddie Solomon, 86, and Mercury Morris, 22. Guy hits the ball and is bobbled by Solomon. Solomon picks it up at the three. Solomon goes down at the 13-yard line in the arms of Charles Phillips, the rookie from USC. All right, let's have another look at that touchdown play. Stabler handing off and in for the score. No problem. They've been chewing up on the rush, the two young ones I talked about, Crowder and Reese. And they're going to have to block that hole to stem the ground game. Banizak, the veteran whom we discussed earlier, going in for the score. Ball just short of the 12-yard line. Miami takes over once again. Greasy at quarterback. Morris, 22, Nottingham, 36, the setbacks. 
Quilly coming towards you in motion. Nottingham over the left side. He slips. Understandably so. We had a downpour just before the start of the game, and this field is one that does get a little slippery. Well, just to recap for anybody who might just be tuning in, Frank, the Oakland Raiders got off early when Miami fumbled in its own territory. Oakland recovered, went 38 yards in 10 plays, elapsed time of the drive, 5.02. They converted three big third down plays into first downs, won a 17-yard stapler pass. Nottingham got one yard, second down and nine. Plenty at the bottom of your screen. to Morris. Kutchenberg with a fine block out in front of Morris who fumbles the ball but I believe it was blown dead. Bob Kutchenberg with a fine block out in front of Mercury Morris who gets eight yards. It'll be third down. A long one. The ball just over the 20. Here he is. Former Notre Dame player. Bob Kutchenberg in there with Larry Little to give the Miami Dolphins two of the fine guards in the game. Norm Bulash has come in at fullback for the Bull. Number 31. He's in there with the Miami Dolphins, other tight end, Andre Tillman. The standard procedure for most pro football teams on third and short yardage. Bulash. Bulash with the second effort. Moves out to the just short of the 24-yard line. It'll be a first down for Miami. Here he is, the much-traveled Norm Bulash, I guess you could say, originally drafted by Don Shula as he comes out of the lineup now, and back goes Nottingham. Now he stays in. Wasn't quite sure whether he belonged there or not. They've been shuffling these running backs around. They have six of them they like to play. Five of them gained over 200 yards in three seasons. Hello, Nottingham, Bullish, and Morris. And the pass intended out there for Twilly, doing a fine job defensively, was number 24, Willie Brown. Took his one shot. He really bumped Twilly. Different. Remember in our opening game a year ago, that thriller in which Buffalo beat Oakland 21 to 20 on the late pass in the final seconds by Ferguson to Ahmad Rashad? It looked to us then that Willie Brown might be at the end of the trail, but the real story turned out to be that at an advanced age, he had missed much of training because of the strike. It took him longer to get in shape. He's back and effective. Second down, the ball short of the 24-yard line of Miami. They trail 7 to nothing. 4.45 remaining in the first quarter. Here comes an open rush. Greasy gets it off, intended for Mandich. Good defensive play by number 43, George Atkinson and Monty Johnson dropping back from middle linebacker. That's the ticket, Giffer. Monty Johnson has become a first-rate middle linebacker, a defensive lineman you'll remember at Nebraska, Frank. They quickly converted him to the lineback position, and he is doing a fine job in the middle lineback position. Dan Conn is another of those victimized by the 43-man rule. You all remember the splendid number 55 through all of the years with the Oakland Raiders, Dan Connors. No longer here. The Raiders put in their number one draft pick, the All-American from Ohio State, on the preventive defense, number 45, Neil Colsey. Five-man defensive secretary on third, down and ten. Crazy in trouble with Tony Klein, who recovered the fumble that led to Oakland's first touchdown. And Miami having multiple problems moving the ball against the Oakland Raiders. Tony Klein is not the biggest guy in football, but he's quick, and that's really what the front four Oakland is. They're quick. They're not very strong and not very heavy, but they're very quick to the pass rush. And, of course, Klein comes in, takes an inside release, and gets Greasy, who can't really scramble too well. He's got to lay back in the pocket and have a little time to throw the ball. Larry Seipel drops to punt for Miami, kicking to a dangerous man, the youngster I spoke of a moment ago, number 45, Neil Colsey. The All-American from Ohio State, and he did everything for the Buckeyes. Played in the Rose Bowl three consecutive years, and Seifel has to hurry it. It goes end over end. Colsey without the fair catch. Colsey inside the 40 of Miami to the 39-yard line. Hit there by Mike Cullen of Miami. Four minutes remaining in the first quarter. The Raiders seven, Miami nothing. 
Home Light makes more chainsaws for professionals than any other company in America. Home Light sells more chainsaws to farmers. Home Light made cutting easier for homeowners by introducing the only two trigger chainsaw. And Home Light has the most servicing dealers. Everybody gives you reasons to buy their chainsaw. Home Light just gives you better ones. Home Light for the pro and the man who wants to cut like one. Have you insulated your attic yet? Every day you wait, it's money through the roof. Insulate now with Owens Corning fiberglass, six inches or more. Depending on where you live, you could save from $50 to $200 a year on heating and air conditioning with an average attic. Already have a little insulation? Ask your building supply dealer or fiberglass insulation contractor how much you could save by adding more. Every day you wait, it's money through the roof. Some 80,000 fans jammed in the Orange Bowl in Miami. They came expecting to see their pets, their favorites, the five-time playoff Miami Dolphins. And right now, the Oakland Raiders are dominating with four minutes remaining in the first quarter. Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell and Alex Karras. There's the man that has led the Oakland Raiders in their one touchdown drive that took five minutes to play. Capped off by Pete Banizak, driving in from the two-yard line. Set up by a fumble recovery by Tony Klein. And once again, Oakland in good field position. After forcing a 14-yard drop by Greasy. It's on first down, and the ball goes to Harold Hart, the second-year man out of Texas Southern. He gets five yards. What Miami needs here is a break, a turnover, unless this game begin to get out of hand early. The Oakland team is a powerhouse, popularly felt to be perhaps the strongest team in the National Football League in terms of pure personnel. Pittsburgh adherents would argue with that, of course, but Miami just can't afford to give up another touchdown to the Raiders. Second down and six. The ball just short of the 35-yard line. to the first down taken out of bounds at the 27 yard line another Oakland Raider first down Marv Hubbard who went out for a few minutes in the first quarter we thought perhaps he was shaken up back in the lineup you see him shaking his right arm his right shoulder seemingly all right if that run is any indication Miami's only been going with uh, three men on a defensive line, and now they put in the fourth one right now. I don't know what, the, what their thinking was on that, but uh, they finally got it back into a four-man situation in front. Both wide receivers on the first down. Move out to the right for Kenny Stabler of the Oakland Raiders. Grand Chimaletnikov coming back to the weak side. Getting the call is Harold Hart. Hart gets a couple of yards, taken out of bounds by Mike Colin, and we talked about the youngsters in the middle of that defensive unit the Miami Dolphins, but Mike Colon has quite a burden. At middle linebacker, he has been a steady performer, a strong performer on the outside, but the middle spot is new, and anyone who's ever been in that spot knows that it takes a special kind of knack to play that position. Not only that, Giff, he openly says that he doesn't like playing that position. He is, of course, the hardest hitter by repute on the Miami team. All right, the ball is marked just inside the 28. Second down, 10. Stabler firing and picked off. Picked off by Charlie Babb, number 49. Charlie Babb, who's in the lineup, replacing the great Dick Anderson. Gives Miami a much-needed break. That's exactly right. The break they needed. They're equal in turnovers now. The fumble recaptured by Tony Klein earlier in the quarter at the very top of the contest that Oakland capitalized on for the score. Now Miami has, while not great field position, reasonable, they're at their own 30 or just about at it. And let's see if they can muster up an offense. Well, they put a little pressure on Stabler, too. They had the uh, middle uh, tackle go all the way to the outside. They're twisting terrifically in there, and I've never seen them happen before. And, of course, this is causing some problems for Stabler. And you saw, once again, the slippery turf as Branch went down. Bad made the pickoff. First and 10 for Miami. Just over their own 29-yard line, they trail 7-0. Pulley in motion. Flooding his back to the left. Casey is looking for an ISO. 
isolation situation. And this time it's picked off by Oakland. Gerald Irons. Dropping deep. Gerald Irons. A linebacker from Maryland State. Notice how quickly the Blues begin. The cheers that greeted the Dolphins at the very start of the contest. Transposed with immediacy into the expression of vocal disfavor. And the ball uh, transformed yeah, such, to the Raiders. Such are the dispositions and loyalties of the fans. And certainly circumscribed around Gerald Irons on that particular play. That's right. The linebackers for Oakland, by the way, are 86, Gerald Irons, 58, Monty Johnson, 41, Phil Villapiano out of Bowling Green, Ted Hendricks, number 83, probably sidelined all night with a pulled groin muscle. The recent acquisition and superb linebacker destined ultimately to replace Gerald Irons who made that interception. On first down, Stabler. Over the middle to his fullback, Marv Hubbard, and Hubbard inside the 35, down to the 32. Hit there by Bob Matheson, and there is a flag back now. It's going to come back, a holding call going against Oakland. A gain of 18, nullified by a holding call. Ten-yard mark off. Just to show you Oakland's domination, notwithstanding that penalty, Frank, Oakland has gotten the ball respectively on Miami's 38, 39, and 46-yard lines. Always they've been in superb field position. Gene Upshaw, the left guard for Oakland, was caught holding. So Oakland now with the first down at their own 44-yard line. Out to the right goes Belitnikoff. To the left, Branch. at least in the National League. Originally drafted by Detroit, as Howard mentioned earlier. Played a couple of years up in Canada. So, Miami will bring out some of their bigger men. They'll insert number 41, Jarris White, into the secondary. He's back there along with Jake Scott. Also, Barry Hill, number 44. Six defensive secondary men for Miami. Second down and 20. Stabler. Stabler firing and Jarris White was there to deflect it. And you notice that when you take out your offensive, your defensive lineman, you don't get the pass rush, but you can get superb coverage in the deep areas. And I would advise our viewers to watch 44, the rookie defensive back from Iowa State. Another Miami, well, he's not really a sleeper in terms of the draft. He was picked within the top five. But an outstanding player who's desperately needed because of the absence of Dick Anderson. And by the way, Frank, as you know, Jake Scott is playing banged up tonight. He's hurt. Yes, he is. Jake Scott for the knee operation offseason. Injured his shoulder three weeks ago, but he's in there playing as John Madden looks out to his Raiders, who have a third down and 20. Stabler going over the head of Mike Ciani. And Oakland will have to turn the ball over to Miami. Oakland with a 7 nothing lead. They're getting a lot of protection, Stabler. He's just been off target right now, but that won't last all game, that's for sure. He'll come back. will punt for Oakland. Superb athlete Ray Gry. Draft number one draft choice is 73. He'll kick deep to Freddie Solomon, 86. That's Freddie. Solomon, second round draft pick for Miami out of Tampa this year. Was a running quarterback. And what a fine running quarterback he was. Guy puts the foot to this one. Solomon feels it at his 12. Good return by the rookie from Tampa. All the way out to the 32-yard line. He took a chance at the 12, and it paid off. 22-yard return. We'll be back in the Orange Bowl after this. 
Ford Motor Company announces a dramatic increase in its average gas mileage rating for 1976 cars over 1975. Based on estimated EPA sales weighted figures, we project an average rating increase of 27%. An increase of 27% in just one year. Of course, some individual gains were not as dramatic as this average since their big improvements were made in 1975 models, like our MPG cars introduced in June. Remember, these results are estimates based on EPA's combined city highway test. So the actual mileage you get may be different. But this impressive gain in our mileage rating has been accomplished without sacrificing the strength the riding comfort or safety features you expect in cars from Ford Motor Company. See our family of cars with a 27% average mileage rating gain at your Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealers October 3rd. Let's have another look at that kick just returned by Freddie Solomon as we broke. That's a gutsy return. Taking the ball on the run, moving up to take it, and then slipping through and moving the ball back 22 yards. Haven't seen that kind of return since Albie Booth pulled it off for Yale against the Catfish Smith Georgia team in the early 30s. It was 31, wasn't it? I remember that. First and 10 for Miami. Bullock. Bullock driving for yardage. He's out to the 37-yard line. And Norm Bullock, along with Benny Malone and Don Nottingham and Mercury Morris, had tremendous preseasons rushing. It was the best rushing year the Dolphins have ever had. And there is a good look at him. Came up in 1970, drafted number one by Don Shulin when he was with Baltimore. And into what? Philadelphia. Had a problem with concussions last year. Second down and four. Ball at the 37. goes out to the 40. It'll be third down, two yards for Miami. I'd like to see Mercury Morris have a great season this year, and I'll tell you the reason why. You know, he's been behind two of the greatest ball players and didn't get to play as much as he'd like to. He knows the pressure's on this year. He was a competitor. behind Kick. Kick got mad because he was behind Mercury. Yeah, but they switch back and forth an awful lot, Howard, and I think he knows that he has to control the game for Miami now, and he's going to do a job. Third down. Absolutely no one to throw to, Gipper. The fans boo him off the field again. The young man is a poised veteran quarterback. One of the better ones in football. That's the end of the first quarter. Oakland over Miami, 7 to nothing. We'll return to the Orange Bowl in a moment. STP oil treatment helps reduce friction and wear in your engine so it can live a longer life. That's why folks keep pouring the STP. STP, STP, for folks who drive, that's you and me. There's a good reason, whatever season, it helps your oil do a better job. Coffee has changed the way America makes coffee. Brews it perfectly, the best I've ever tasted, and brews it faster than any other coffee maker. You make coffee better than coffee was, and it's only because Mr. Coffee came along. Mr. Coffee. There's only one Mr. Coffee. That's the man you're looking at, Otis Armstrong, number 24, Denver Broncos, rushed for 1,407 yards a year ago, led the NFL, had over 2,000 personally on total offense when you include his pass reception. A remarkable player from Purdue, you'll see him next Monday night against the Green Bay Packers. 
And for Bob Greasy, a third down gambling long pass attempt backfire. The Miami Dolphins trailing the Raiders seven to nothing as we begin the second quarter. We'll punt. There's Marv Hubbard shaken up in the first quarter. His replacement, Pete Banaszak, went in for the Oakland touchdown. But Marv Hubbard is the man they like to get through the ball in the short situations. Okay, this is Larry Seipel. Single safety, Neil Colsey. Colsey at his own 24. And Colsey goes down as he goes over the 35. It's slipping up, all over the place. And gets yep. out to the 39-yard line, a gain of 13. Andre Tillman hustling down there for Miami. Neil Colsey, and what a great career he had at Ohio State. The number one draft pick, three times, three consecutive years in the Orange Bowl, rather the Rose Bowl. And a fine all-star game, too. As a matter of fact, two defensive back rookies on Oakland figure to be outstanding in the future. Colsey from Ohio State and Phillips from your alma mater, USC. Minus 21 yards passing for Miami. You don't win football games that way. And Miami trails 7 to nothing. Ball just short of the 39 as Oakland takes possession. Marv Hubbard back in the lineup over the left side, getting yardage out to the 45-yard line, a gain of six. In line with the conversation we had, Alex, during the preseason, Marv Hubbard asked me to tell you today that any team of 11 guys playing today could beat any team of 11 guys playing 10 years ago. How about in a fist fight? <laughs> That we didn't discuss because you were never noted for your pugilistic ability. <laughs> Second down and four. The ball just short of the 45-yard line. Harold Hart over the left side. This time he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Picks up a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Hit there by Mike Colon. Number 57 and Don Reese, number 76. Remember that Harold Hart was the rookie surprise of a year ago, 11th round draft choice out of Southern University. He's seeing frontline duty tonight because of a muscle pull that's been hampering Clarence Davis, number 28. There's Neil Colsey at 15 interceptions at Ohio State. Change in his shoes. We told you the poly turf here at the Orange Bowl gets slippery when it gets wet. And we had a downpour just prior to the start of the game. Third down, three. The ball just over the 45 for Oakland. Stabler, Hubbard, wide open over the middle. First down inside the 40 of Miami. Marv Hubbard hit there by Mike Cullen. And somehow or other, Kenny Stabler is victimizing a Miami defensive unit. And one would suspect that it might be a problem of Mike Cullen at middle linebacker. When you see a back come out of there, it's usually a linebacker that's supposed to pick him up, and right now they're just coming out of there at will and catching the ball. The first down is just short of the 38-yard line. Out to the left goes Cliff Branch. Out to the right is Bolitnikoff, and Pete Banizak is back in with Jeff Phillips on the 35. Banizak is 40. Here's Banizak. Big hole, and Banizak spins and twists inside the 30-yard line. Once again, they're ripping through that young middle of the Miami defensive line. They are definitely feeling the absence of Manny Fernandez and Bob Hines. Well, you can see Randy Crowder, 74. He's a tough young kid, and he's going to be a good one. But right now, they're pushing him down the line, and they're taking advantage of that middle, as Howard pointed out. And uh, big, big holes are being open. Here's Colin right here. He's sitting in pretty good. And now he's getting blocked off pretty good by the center in there. Center's doing a good job. The new center for the uh, Jim Langer's doing a fine job. Well, Jim Otto said today he's been working with Excuse Dave me, Dalby for the uh, past three years now, and he says he's a quick learner, and he says he's going to fill the job Adler. There was a gain of nine by Banizak. Second down, less than a yard for Oakland. Stabler. Wide open, tight end, Dave Casper. And Oakland continues to move, a gain of 15 as the second year man, Dave Casper from Notre Dame, comes up with a key catch for Oakland. You know, you look back two years, it used to be suicide to pass against this Miami team. And you know the way this Miami team was coordinated, the defensive unit, it became famous as the no-name defense. The man who molded it, of course, it's an old story, Bill Onsbach, who is now doing a superb coaching job with the Giants. And I think they still miss him down here. 
First and ten at the 13-yard line. Stranger with a lot of time. Dumps it off to Banizak. And he has a lot of running room. Banizak all the way down to the five-yard line. Hit there finally by Doug Swift. I know what Ola Sistrunk, number 60, right there on your camera saying right now. He's saying easy money. <laughs> he hasn't played over two minutes, I don't think. And as you can see, too, it's hot. Alex, you'd like to see Oakland play ball possession. Only about 80 degrees, 79 at kickoff, but it is humid. Showers off and on during the course of the day. Heat is one of the things that's helped the Dolphins with their great winning record in this ballpark in the past. As you know, Frank, many teams fade about the fourth quarter again. On second down and three. Harv Hubbard pulls over the right side. You know, you're talking about the heat situation, and, and when uh, Shula got over here to, uh, and started taking over the uh, coaching reins here, he made his ball players go out four times a day in this kind of heat, and that really got them in good shape. And they weren't the best the football team the first year he had them, but they were sure, certainly in good shape, and they took advantage of this kind of weather down here. There he is, Don Shula. What a great coaching record he has. The youngest ever to win 100 games. You see how much... Oakland has to make to pick up the first down. It'll be third down, as you see, less than a yard. Can you imagine practicing four times a day, Frank? That's what they did, you know. No, that's cause for early retirement. Eleven oh nine remaining in the first half. The Oakland Raiders have dominated. However, they lead by only seven. Banizak going over from the two-yard line. Kenny Stabler looking over the Miami defense and a third down and less than a yard. Banizak and Banizak as he scored the touchdown hurdles over the defense stopped there by Jake Scott at the two-yard line. Pete Banizak, six feet, 210, been around for 10 years. He's here, as Howard mentioned earlier, because he can do a lot of things for Oakland. And continuing to grind. A big play for them in the first quarter was a fumble recovery. The fumble by Nottingham of Miami. Tony Klein was right there. Five minutes later, they were in the end zone. Pete Banizak scoring from two yards out. They lead 7 0. Banizak, and this time he drives just on his own and takes John Andrews, big number 70, with him. Pete Banizak, bigger than he looks. You saw his power. John Andrews is over 250, 6'6". Banizak just lifted him up and took him with him. He's doing a good job out there. Schuler obviously fretting as you look at Don in the picture. Banizak's doing a well of a job. Hubbard went out, looked like he might have hurt his shoulder, Frank. He was shaking his arm, but he came back after he appeared to hurt it the first time. Okay. It's second down. Banizak, no question this time. Banizak with his second touchdown on the night. And Oakland moves out in front of the Miami Dolphins. 13 to nothing. And there's Marv Hubbard getting some treatment on the sidelines, but appears to be an injured shoulder. What a loss that would be. Tim Foley coming to the sidelines for Miami. Well, that time, Oakland went 61 yards, 10 plays, elapsed time of drive, 523. And Miami is in danger of having this game get out of hand. 48-year-old George Blanda, every time he does anything on a football field, it's a record. And at this point, he extends Oakland's lead to 14 to nothing over Miami. We'll be back in just a moment. Hi, I'm Joe Namath. Stevie's eating a burger I cooked in 60 seconds with the new Little Mac by Hamilton Beach. Little Mac not only cooks burgers fast, but also makes cheese or ham sandwiches, apple turnovers, anything you can put between two slices of bread. And only Little Mac flips its grit. Round for burgers, square for sandwiches. The Little Mac 60-second burger machine. It's the best thing from Hamilton Beach since the Butter Up Popper.
If you're like millions of Americans, you'd rather play golf than eat and do anything to improve your game. This could do it. Move up to Ben Hogan's producers. Any clubs with Ben Hogan's name on them have the precision, design, and quality that give you confidence. That's why AMF puts its name on the line, too. And that name adds even more value to sports products like Ben Hogan Bowls and Clubs. AMF brings out the best in you. The Oakland Raiders out in front of the Miami Dolphins, 14 to nothing. The Raiders, a perennial bridesmaid of pro football. They always get to the playoffs. That's almost a foregone conclusion when the season begins. But then something seems to go wrong in the playoffs. Ray Guy kicking off for Oakland. Puts his foot into this one, deep into the end zone. Freddie Solomon, very wisely, takes the ball and takes the touchback. And what a foot he's got. 14 to nothing, Oakland. The architect of the offense, there's a flag down, I believe. The architect of the offense, clearly Kenny Stabler, both with, both with his passing and his play calling. He's been the chief executor of the offense, though nobly abetted, because in his six pass completions in the game thus far, each one has been to a different receiver. He knows how to use his people. They're discussing the penalty gift. Why don't you get down to be and straighten them out? <laughs> holding against the Miami Dolphins, and the flag is way up at the 42-yard line of Oakland. Jim Tunney discussing it with his crew of officials. I got a big kick out of the defensive captain there right now. As you see, he's talking to the referee, but really when he makes up his mind, he's going to look over to the coach and the coach will tell him what to do. It's kind of a formal thing they go through. Holding against Miami, declined. Bruce Elia, the rookie linebacker for Miami was caught holding and Miami prefers the touchback. Morris and running into a lot of trouble. Mercury Morris in there from his middle linebacker spot, Monty Johnson. Uh, generating no ground game at all, the Miami Dolphins. Let's take a look at that last touchdown. Pete Banizak, good blocking, a hold goes in easily. Head down. Its own battering ram, Alex. They're just driving it home. You see the offensive lineman just knocking the defensive lineman apart, and the fullbacks are going in with the head down, and it's just basic football right there, folks, right there on the goal line. Loss of four by Mercury Morris. Second down and 14. The ball at the 16-yard line. Greasy back and looking. Greasy will go down. Horace Jones, number 82, from defensive end, all over Bob Greasy, and the Blue Birds begin to vocalize once again. Well, we're talking about uh, one of the weaknesses the Oakland Raiders have, and I think it's because their defensive line is a little light. And if you can take the ball to them on running and, and control the ball game that way, you can beat Oakland. But if you, got, if you get behind and enable that uh, defensive lineman just to, to rush that passer and not worry about the run, then it's going to be a big, big, long night. And you can see right now this is exactly what's happening. They're really pouring in on the quarterback. And to Alex, they are not a team that makes mistakes. Your head coach John Madden and Al Davis do not tolerate mistakes. Third down at 21. Bulash eyeing the right side. Bulash picks up about four yards. I'm he needed 21. I'm surprised, Alex, by the inability to generate a ground game on the part of Miami because the one thing that's been untouched in this whole Miami superstructure has been the offensive line. It remains a superb unit. You don't have better pulling running guards than 66 Little, 67 Kuchenberg. You can't get a better guy than 73 Norm Evans. And yet they haven't been able to move the ball against Oakland on the ground, and Oakland was very weak in defensing the rush last year. That statistic translated. Raiders 14, Miami nothing. Cycle puts the foot to it. Back deep, Neil Colsey, and he takes it on the fly and immediately is nailed at the 40-yard line. Down there, the center, Jim Langer, number 62. A 33-yard punt, a six-yard return. 
7.28 remaining in the first half. In a game dominated by Oakland. Oakland out in front of Miami, 14 to nothing. We'll be back in the Orange Bowl in just a moment. Someday, about 2,200 pounds from now and half a dozen feet taller, this little fella might follow the hoofsteps of his father, a member of the Big Hitch, the team of champion Clydesdales that symbolize the King of Beers, symbolize a tradition, a promise, a dedication that can be summed up in one word, pride. Maybe that's why, when you say Budweiser, you've said it all. Five cars, five dead batteries. But we're going to start all five with one battery, a two-year-old Sears Die Hard. The Sears Die Hard. It lives up to its name. Sold only at Sears. 28 remaining in the first half at the Orange Bowl as you see the Raiders out in front of Miami 14 to nothing and this program is being brought to you as a special exclusive of ABC Sports right now let's pause five seconds and allow our local stations to identify themselves Manny Fernandez sidelined one of the great tackles for Miami over the years out with an injured ankle one first and ten Oakland gives the ball to Banizak. He turns the corner, has running room. And Oakland chewing up the Miami defense as Banizak goes down to the 26-yard line, a gain of 14. And the guy they turned the corner on there, Doug Swift, the gentleman from Amherst. Miami has another problem that seems obvious at this point, Giff. In trying to get back in the ball game, they don't have the Warfield type who can break open that game for you or can get you back in so quickly because of the big play. Mark Van Egan comes in for Oakland, second year man out of Colgate. He's in there with number 40. Or rather number 34, Harold Hart and Harold Hart spins away from a tackle by Charlie Babb and now a flag goes down as John Andrews comes over to make the stop on Hart. second-year man. There's the clipping. There's the foul indicated against Miami. Two second-year running backs in there now for Oakland. And now Jess Phillips come in. Jess Phillips acquired from New Orleans by the Oakland Raiders. That's the story. It has been all Oakland. They capitalized on a fumble by Nottingham of Miami. Went in to score. A two-yard touchdown by Banizak. They have been in complete control of the game. Banizak scored just a few moments ago, again from one yard out. And John Madden has to be happy with what he's seeing this evening. While his counterpart, Don Shula, must be wondering what's ahead. First and ten. Ball at the 14-yard line. is down, however. Jess Phillips, he was acquired from New Orleans. It was suspected he had a bad knee. He showed up and became the outstanding rusher for Oakland during the preseason. As you see, the holding call against Oakland, that one will come back. Hubbard, we have been told, has a dislocated shoulder. He's out for the rest of the game. And much more than that, one would suspect. Marv Hubbard with a dislocated shoulder has gained nearly 900 yards over the past four years. Bro. And you know, it's it's really funny, but Steve Toll, number 56, is a young, inexperienced ball player, and he's bumping into his lineman right there, and he just runs right past the dog on Jess Phillips. And Jess Phillips, to me, Frank, uh, is, a, is an acquisition that they picked up that's really going to help this team. And you say Hubbard's out with the shoulder. Jess Phillips will come in, and he's a tough, tough runner. I've never really understood why he was moved around so much. Michigan State University, a lot of personal troubles, then in with Paul Brown, then down in New Orleans, and now over here. And he's having a ball. 7.05 remaining in the first half. It'll be first down and 20. The ball just inside the 25. That's Mike Colon. He 
has been replaced by Toll, whom you saw a moment ago. They're taking his blood pressure. Notice Frank on the right arm. It's a very warm night. We wouldn't even hazard a guess as to what could be wrong with Mike Cullen, but it is warm. It's very humid. On first down for Oakland. Vanazak. Bouncing off Miami Dolphins, and he's all the way down to the 11-yard line. Finally dropped by Charlie Babb. 14-yard pickup by Banizak, who's having some night. Well, well, John Shula has to be in absolute anguish. A number of times tonight, we've seen that very thing happen. The Oakland uh, back with the ball, trapped behind the line of scrimmage. Easy prey for a tackler. The clean tackle's not forthcoming. And the Oakland runners breaking into quick daylight. This is not anything like the Miami team we were accustomed to the last five years. Not up to this point anyway. Lewis Carter, still another back for Oakland is in there, but he slips and goes down, does the rookie from Maryland. About the only setback the Raiders have had thus far. Banizak now has piled up 45 yards and eight carries. Two of those carries resulting in touchdowns. Of course, the play before this one, you'll see Toll again, number 56, going and really overrunning this play again. He goes right to the right side. And what he has to do, really, is he has to hang in there a little bit more. He's, he's got to play a little bit more in the middle, and he isn't. And, of course, this gives a natural hole. And here, here we go again. There's Banaschek. Steve Toll, the rookie from Kansas. The Miami Dolphins are very high on this youngster, but he is seeing a lot of different things tonight than he saw in preseason from the Raiders. Third down and six. Ball just inside the eleven. Jess Phillips. And Phillips high steps it down to the six yard line. Finally stopped there by Bob Matheson. He's a tough, tough runner, boy, I'll tell you. We used to try and tackle him down there when he played with New Orleans, and you can bring him down, but boy, I'll tell you, you knew him in your ball game when you played against him. He's a tough runner. Still, before he got his momentum underway, 74, Randy Crowder had a good, clean shot at him and didn't execute the tackle, taking nothing away from Phillips. It's fourth down. That means the ancient one, only in chronological age, because George Blanda is still a youngster, will attempt from 25 yards for him, that's almost automatic. Raiders extending their lead over Miami. Open 17, the Miami Dolphins nothing. Four minutes, 54 seconds remaining in the first half. Now, developed from the same aramid fibers used in space, Goodyear brings you a revolutionary tire cord. Flex 10, extremely flexible, high tensile strength, pound for pound, five times stronger than steel. Of course, any tire cord is only one of the many factors that contribute to a tire's performance. Goodyear tested a wide variety of tires with Flex 10 cord for half a billion miles. Flex 10, here now in the belts of soft riding tires for luxury cars. The Goodyear Double Eagle, Flex 10, soon in the belts of performance tires for lightweight and toughness. Flex 10, adding its strength to the heavy duty tires of trucks and off the road equipment. And now found in a new winter radial with no metal studs. Flex 10 is here. Pound for pound, five times stronger than steel, and only from Goodyear. Ray Guy will set it up at the 35-yard line. The Oakland Raiders have extended their lead to 17 to nothing over Miami. A 25-yard field goal by George Blanda. A couple of inside the five touchdown shots by Pete Banizak. That's been the scoring, but it's been a game totally dominated by Oakland. Deep, Freddie Solomon, 86, Mercury Morris, 22. Miami needs more than anything is one big break and you look out on the field and you wonder who will give it to them Solomon from the one out over the 25 to the 26 hit down there by Warren Bankston the captain of the special teams for Oakland I think Miami needs about four big breaks yeah, well, I'll tell you something, Howard. I'm not giving you any more cigars. Frank, don't let him have any more of my cigars. His people did not get in touch with my people yet. I'm still not on his show. Alex, you are on the show Saturday night. I know that. Really and truly, Howard? I didn't I? want you to break the news to him. He's been specially requested. Well, we'll get to the rest of the live Saturday night with Howard Cosell in a moment. But right now, the Miami Dolphins trailing 17 to nothing. Moving from their own 26, fully in motion. 
Greasy goes to Mandich, and you see something that doesn't often happen. Jim Mandich does not hold on to the football. That's true, and what you saw then was good protection for Greasy. That time, he had all the time in the world to throw. Of course, it was a running down, and of course, the linemen, you know, are not going to be more apt to rush the pass passer in the first down situation. Greasy knows that. He's trying to do something about it. That's a good play. He's 0 for 4 at the moment, is Bob Greasy. 436 remaining in the first half. Second down, the ball at the 26. Out to the left comes Twilly. He'll tie up there with the veteran Willie Brown. Up to the right, Nate Moore. Up on his head, top of your screen, Skip Thomas. And getting the call is Goulash, and Goulash oh. gets a couple of yards, but it puts Greasy back in a passing situation and he has already been sacked several times tonight. You talk about lineback play, Alex. Did you see Bill Villapiano close that gap? He's a tough guy, and he's not a very big guy, but he's quick as the Dickens, and he can make the, get, get right to the middle of that field or to the outside of that field. He's good on the pass. He's active. One Defense, of the most very, active, very active guys in the league. That's That was the hallmark of your old Detroit Lions with Numoff and Lucci and Wayne Walker. That's right. He's very, very quick. Very Seipel is in the ball game for Miami. Set back number 20. He's a good receiver. That's why he's there. Third down and nine. Gracie has Twilly all alone. Howard Twilly. First down for Miami at the 40-yard line of Oakland. A 33-yard completion. And either Twilly put on a tremendous move against he Willie Brown. Hurt. Boy, and Twilly has been shaken up. A great deal like a possible concussion. That's all Miami needs. Shula hasn't had enough. In that vein, Frank, I had to wonder why Dunn traded to New Orleans for a future draft choice as Twilly comes out of the game shaken up, obviously, at the very least. Melvin Baker, the bright prospect from Southern of a year ago. I guess it was because he kept get, getting hurt. Take a look at that again. Twilly's off the field now under his own power, walking on the sidelines. He was shaking up just momentarily. And as I suspected, you saw a couple of Raiders slip. That's the third Raider that went down on a very slippery turf. Morris Owens, number 82, replaces Twilly. First and 10 for Miami. They're at the 41-yard line of Oakland. to the outside. Gets about three yards after covering about 30. Taken out of bounds there by Skip Thomas. It'll be second down and seven. Clock moving. Three minutes. Now stop with the out of bounds at 3.01 remaining in the first half. We told you it was warm. I believe that's Mike Colon. Now here's Twilly. We saw Colon a while ago having his blood pressure taken. Now we have Twilly sucking on oxygen. Very sticky night in Miami. Second down and six. All at the 38-yard line of Oakland. Going out of the flat and Jim Manich held on that time. He slammed the ball down in disgust. He had to be very careful of the footing. Take a chance, he might have tacked on additional yardage, but he gets the first down at the 29 yard line. In the long run, the mark of the great quarterback might be patience, the real mark, and that's what Greasy has to be here. Miami is too stable a team, too well coached a team to panic, even if 17 points behind. So Greasy will take the short yardage and not try to go for everything at once. Might not panic, are you sure? Can believe he's a little nervous. Goulash over the right side finds a hole good for six yards and now flag is down there's the foul face guard oh against Oakland look at it again and see if you can pick it up there's Goulash right there was Bill Bellapiano 
Yeah. And Phil, he gets a little active out there. He's not one of the biggest people around, and he figures he should be able to do a few things he shouldn't. Arizona's being two timed in there. It takes a little inside rush, and they go right through him on that one. Come on, Otis. Sir. <laughs> Miami moving now. They have a first down. They're inside the 19 yard line of Oakland. There's the story in terms of time. 2.50 remaining in the first half. Oakland out in front, 17 0. Two Banizak short yardage touchdowns and a 25 yard Blanda field goal. is what Miami did not have last year that they had in the previous years. They would hope it, that he would return to his form of 72 and 73 and he looks like he may have. Mercury Morris, the great speedster. Doing this really on his own as he moves to the outside. Atkinson totally mistimed his tackle, but Willie Brown is there to save the touchdown. Now they mark it just short of the six-yard line. The two tight ends are in. Jim Mandich, 88. Andre Tillman, 87. Morris. And driving, heading inside the five-yard line. Now Nottingham trots out onto the field. Morris will depart. Yeah, the little butter ball's in there now. They must have this touchdown to stay in this ball game. Clock moving, moving towards the two-minute warning. They should be able to get this playoff. Matt Moore, the single wide receiver, as head coach Don Chula looks on. He knows how desperately Miami needs this touchdown. Wrestles blow. I don't know whether we got inside the two-minute warning. There was contact made. Clock indicates 158. But there also was movement at the line of scrimmage. Two minute warning. So with two minutes remaining in the first half, Miami will have a second down on the four yard line of Oakland. They trail 17 to nothing. We'll be back. And as you retire, Joe, carry this gold watch with you to this year joe's retiring not you but when you do retire you'll need more than a watch you'll need money so find out if you qualify for the new individual retirement savings plan at your savings and loan the new income tax laws make this plan very profitable stop by at your savings and loan and ask about their individual retirement savings account that watch is running Norelco, yes sir, this is my coffee maker. Makes up to 12 cups automatically and perfect every time. I love it. And consumer testing magazines liked it too. Hey look, I know you can spend less for a coffee maker. <laughs> you could spend more too. But I don't care what you pay. You can't buy a finer one. Mm. Take a tip from Danny Boy. If you compare like I did, you will buy a Norelco coffee maker. critical moment as we look from the Goodyear blimp Mayflower at a jam-packed Orange Bowl. The Miami Dolphins have been practically run out of this stadium. They trail the Oakland Raiders 17 to nothing. However, they have a second down at the four-yard line of the Raiders. And can they get it in? They'll be right back in the football game. John Madden looking on. His counterpart, Don Shula. The coaches, two coaches with great coaching records. Shula understandably apprehensive the Dolphins have been shoved all over the field and yet they are right back in the game should they be able to get this in from the four Bulash and Nottingham are the two big setbacks the greasy wants it to go to the air goes to Nat Moore good coverage out there by Skip Thomas Skip Thomas who has turned into an outstanding defensive cornerback for Oakland. There's Marv Hubbard with that big ice pack on that left shoulder. And he 
must be some tough cookie. If you've ever had a injured shoulder, you know that it may is not, really painful. May not be separated, Frank. Might be just a deep bruise. On third down. Solomon, I'm told, Frank, has a dislocated big toe, which has to be a source of major worry. First down at the 36. Hart is in motion. Matazak, who has been the chief man in the Raiders running game tonight, moves for eight yards out to the 44-yard line as Bob Matheson makes a stop, but... Miami has not been able to control the middle. We told you over and over about the two youngsters who are in there, Don Reese and Randy Crowder. Well, Gene and now Upshaw, they also have a rookie middle linebacker. Excuse me. Gene Upshaw and Dave Dalby and George Bueller and John Bella and Art Shaw are doing a terrific job. And what they're doing to that defensive line is they're sending them right up on their toes and knocking them back into their linebackers. And linebackers cannot move around unless that defensive line at least penetrates or at least holds the line of scrimmage. Mark Van Egan. Second-year man out of Colgate moves into Miami territory, and Oakland will take time out with 51 seconds remaining in the first half. Now, if you can watch the middle linebacker, he's going to—he shouldn't let the uh, center get to him. Cole, Dolby, told, Dolby's getting told, and he knocks him right back. He goes back and turns his back on him. And of course, if you're a middle linebacker and you do that, you're, you're not going to last too much longer. I'll tell you that—you're going to have some bad knees and once in a while a bad back. Toll is getting an education, no question about it. It's a very sad thing, as I guess most of America knows by now, that our president was shot at today in San Francisco outside the St. Francis Hotel. At halftime, we're going to take you to our ABC studios in New York and the distinguished Mr. Harry Reisner who will give you an up-to-the-minute report. 
fortunately, the president perfectly fine. Not hit. Conversation there on the sidelines between Kenny Stabler and his head coach, John Madden. Now Stabler back onto the field. 51 seconds remaining in the first half. He has two more timeouts. And 1974 player of the year, as you saw, was Kenny Stabler. Uh, what a great year it was for Kenny. 26 touchdown passes. the big man from the University of Mars. Alex's classic comment of a year ago in his very first effort on I was kid, I was kidding, Otis. <laughs> Peace too, brother. <laughs> first down. Mark Van Egan, number 30, is the single setback. Stabler going deep. Picked off by Tony Babb. And Babb gets his first interception of the season. The pass attempted for Branch, and I believe Tim Foley knocked off Branch as he came off the line of scrimmage, giving Babb an easy shot at the interception. So Charlie Babb, who's stepping into big shoes, the big shoes of Dick Anderson, who underwent knee surgery and is out for the season, gets his first interception. 41 seconds remaining in the half. What, what, what am I going to do on your show, Mark? We're going am to, I going to sing or what? We're going to let Gifford decide that since he broke the news as you watch this replay. Babb, by the way, made a fine over-the-shoulder catch. Frank, am I singing? Uh, I, San Diego, aren't you? He got you as far away from him as he could. <laughs> there it is again. No, Alex, the hottest rock group in the country, the Eagles, are going to be on the show. Live from Balboa Stadium, San Diego. You're going to bring them on. Uh, they're quite a group. Bulash is going to go out of bounds. That's going to kill the clock with 34 seconds. But I'm sure that Miami was thinking more in terms of running it out. They're in an area where you don't like to gamble a whole lot, particularly when you have just got yourself back into the football game, as Miami did, with a 74-yard touchdown drive. How'd you get friendly with the Eagles, Alex? Well, they're Detroit guys, and apparently they really love me, and I'm going to go out there and maybe I'll swing with them. I might use an instrument and play with them, too. I don't know yet. They That's remember. my country, you know. I dig it out there. They remember when you were good. <laughs> Second down and six. Now Nottingham. And Nottingham does what I'm sure Miami likes for him to do. <laughs> Banizak. Resting casually on his helmet. And now Oakland calls timeout. They'll have one timeout, and they are going to Perhaps, barring a first down by Emmy, get another chance at the football. Third and four, and over to the sideline comes Bob Greasy. Fra Frank, I'm sorry, but who else is on the show? I want to know if I'm going to be all right on that show, Howard. Who else is on the show? A fella named John Wayne. Oh, I'll be a fella named Red Fox. A fella named Muhammad Ali, live from Manila. A fella named Joe Frazier, live from Manila. One of them could be something less than live, 48 hours after the show. And a lady who is, I think, one of the most remarkable people in the country, named Barbara Walters. Wow. And a marvelous singing lady named Linda Ronson. Well, I guess yeah, it's only going to be an hour. I guess I'll end up as a usher again this week. <laughs> you know, I, I'm really one of the nice people in the game of football is a guy named O.J. Simpson. I'm looking at a telegram which he sent to Howard. Thanks for a thoroughly enjoyable Saturday evening, O.J. The juice. And it must have really fired him up. Oh, no. He <laughs> had a better had Sunday than he had a Saturday night. I'll tell you, 173 yards, two long runs called back. Could have broken his own record. It was Sunday yeah. live with O.J. <laughs> Miami has the oranges, but Buffalo's got, got the, the juice. 19 seconds remaining in the first half, and Miami will certainly try to get the first down because Oakland has one timeout. They'll try and get at least a punt return. Third down and four. Norm Bulash, and quickly, Oakland uses their last timeout. And it's fourth down. Miami will punt. You know, this Saturday, ABC Sports brings you NCAA college football with four exciting regional games, North Carolina State at Michigan State, Illinois will be at Texas A&M, Maryland at Kentucky, and San Jose State at Stanford. NCAA regional college football this Saturday on ABC. 
Now you can check your local listings for the game that will be shown in your area. Larry Seipel comes out for Miami. 14 seconds remaining. Oakland with no more timeouts. They will probably go with everything they have in an attempt to block this punt. Seipel certainly aware of that. He's a fine athlete. Keep in mind, a fair catch would kill the clock and give Oakland an opportunity for a field goal attempt from that spot. So he knows, too, he has to get off a good punt. And it's not bad. Colsey takes it at midfield. Colsey goes out of bounds. Six seconds now, five seconds, indicating on the clock, and Oakland has no more timeouts. 36-yard punt, 11-yard return. Five seconds. Oakland has one play. They lead 17 to 7. A pretty good lead to take to the locker room. Of course, Miami has shortened that lead with that fine drive and wound up with their lone touchdown. Speaking of those games, you'll be seeing coming up, Stanford, of course, had a big game against Michigan over the weekend that tie in the last few seconds. Stanford, always tough. Stabler. Going for Cliff Branch. will be picked off again by Charlie Babb as time runs out. Charlie Babb with his second interception of the night. Just as the gun goes off, ending the first half. The Oakland Raiders lead the Miami Dolphins the end of the first half, 17 to 7. And indeed they are. They got off to a great start yesterday, defeating San Diego 37 to nothing. Not ready for the kickoff of the second half here at the Orange Bowl in Miami, a jam-packed Orange Bowl, 80,000 fans. We'll tell you we abbreviated our highlights, our customary halftime activity, showing you all of the highlights from around the league, or as much as we can, as time permits. Obviously, bigger reason for us to go to New York that the unfortunate happening today in San Francisco. All right, back to uh, the game, Frank, with the kickoff about to occur. Miami had to have gotten some kind of lift from their touchdown late in the second quarter. Earl Morrow warming up. I would doubt that well, we'd be seeing him in action. He's got so much arthritis that he has to, you know, warm up that arm. You said it. 20 years in the league for Earl Morrow. Had a great preseason as Gary Premian gets the foot to it. Taken by Harold Hart at his seven. And Hart rumbles out over the 30 to the 32-yard line. Anticipating the offensive lineup that we saw in the first half. Kenny Stabler, quarterback. We'll check the setbacks as they come in, but the wide receivers will be Cliff Branch, number 21, Fred Bolitnikoff, number 25, the tight end, Bob Moore. The setbacks, Harold Hart, 34, Pete Banizak, number 40, Marv Hubbard, had a dislocated shoulder. We will not see him any further this evening. Just over the 32-yard line, the Oakland Raiders, who got off to a 17-0 lead. Miami came back. Scored seven of their own. It's a closer football game as Banizek tries the left side. And we'll be interested to see what Don Shula has done with the middle of his defensive unit. Mike Colon is back in a middle linebacker. He had some kind of problem. Went out in the first half. Colon but he is back in there replacing the rookie, Steve Toll. Let's give Oakland's offensive line credit. It's one of the best in football. 64, Bealus, 63, Upshaw. A pair of great guards, almost matching or matching in efficiency. Little and Kuchenberg of Miami. They can blow out any defensive line. Second down and eight. Ball resting just over the 35. Draw play, and it goes to Harold Hart. yards moving out to the 37 yard line they'll mark it just short of the 38 so Oakland having trouble they went right back to where they had their success in the middle of the Miami Dolphin line this time Miami has put Oakland back in a passing situation the secondary for Miami Jarris White is it the right cornerback or rather the left cornerback Curtis Johnson is in there at the right cornerback the safeties 
our number 44, Barry Hill. Jake Scott's in there. Babs in there. They're all anticipating pass, and they get it. And a good pressure put on Stabler. The ball is overthrown. Miami holds on their first series of downs. They'll get the football back. Pass intended for more. Well covered by Charlie Babb. Well, I don't know that Shula told them anything at halftime. That kind of stuff is overrated. It's part of football lore, especially dating back to the years of Rockney at Notre Dame. But obviously, Miami itself has come out spirited and has forced a quick turnover of the football, which they couldn't do for most of the first half. Ray Guy will punt to Freddie Solomon. Only open second punt of the night. off a good punt. Solomon from his own 20. And getting down there quickly, Warren Bankston, he is a special teams expert, and a flag is down at the 34. Flag down at the 34-yard line. Good punt by Guy. Good coverage. Flipping against Miami. Well, that's a bad one. Deprives them of a decent field position. Puts them right back in the hole. So they've got a long way to go, Giffer. Offensively for Miami, Gracie comes back out onto the field. You had watched Earl Morrill warming up. As Alex Kara said, he just needed to loosen up some limbs that have aged a little over 20 years in the NFL. But Mo Gracie's in there. Setbacks for Mercury Morris, 22. Norm Boulash, number 31. Wide receivers, 89. Nat Moore, Howard Twilley, number 81. The tight end, Mandich, 88. Flipping was on the rookie back of Miami, Stan Winfrey, the kid from Arkansas State. First and 10 for Miami. Move from just short of their 13-yard line. Bulash over the right side, Phil Villapiano coming in from his linebacking spot to make the stop. Defensive front four for Oakland. Doing a good job throughout the first half against a veteran offensive line of Miami. Langers at center. Little 66, Kuchenberg 67, the guards. Wayne Moore, left tackle 79, Norm Evans 73, the right tackle. Gain of four for Bulash. It'll be second down and six. Morris, Otis Sistrunk. And Alex, Otis Sistrunk seems to improve every time we watch it. Well, he can move laterally as good as any defensive lineman uh, I've ever seen, and uh, that's what re really what he can do best. As far as the run is concerned, I don't know. He's, uh, he's uh, a little weak on the run at times, but uh, I'm not going to argue with Otis. He's a big guy, and he wears uh, garlic around his neck, and he can do anything he wants to Howard. He's your man. You're saddled with him for the rest of the season, even as you were a year ago. I'll not fight with you. There's Don Shula. The indomitability etched in the visage. On third down. Okay. Prevent defense. Fully left. More right. Breezy with a lot of time and gets off the completion. Now that's that more from the wide spot, breaking in, finding the hole. That's the kind of pass I like to see, Alex. Man moves out, comes back, no way to stop it. The ball there virtually as he turns around and comes back. Oh, yeah. Neil Colsey was in there on the prevent defense. Made the stop. First down for Miami. They're at the 29-yard line. I must have seen Giff do that 200 times in his career. What was that? <laughs> Without the speed of Matt, what Neil Colsey did. On first and ten. Wants to go deep, intended for Howard Twilley, not noted for the That's swift legs. Exactly the point. You can't beat anybody deep with Howard Twilley. Twilley is hard to contain within a restricted area because he is so clever, because he moves so well. But for the deep bomb, no way. Defensively, we saw Otis Sistrunk again with pressure. Horace Jones is a defensive end along with Tony Klein, number 84. Jones is 82. Sistrunk, of course, 60. 
Kelvin Carver remains in there, number 71 defensive tackle. The linebackers are Monty Johnson in the middle, number 58. Phil Villapiano, 41. Zero irons, 86. Second down and 10. up a couple of yards. Give him three. It'll be third down and seven. He dances. Brother, that was Larry Seipel, I believe. He dances with the football the way Alex dances in the dance-off. Seipel with a good block out there, too. <laughs> Seipel happens to be one of the better all-around players in the league in terms of versatility. Again, I'll remind our viewers and listeners of his superb run on a presumed punt situation that carried the Dolphins to a victory over the Steelers a couple of years back in the playoffs. He's in there for the passing down. He's in there wearing number 20. Good receiver. Oh, you saw it. Miami jumping the count. Pass attempt going to Mandage. Flag is down at the line of scrimmage, and Matt Moore, I believe, was a young man who anticipated that count by about a beat. At least, incompletion will be declined. Oakland wants the football. Well, you know, we talked about it earlier. Uh, Miami just can't run that ball, and they can't keep that ball uh, like they used to with the big, big runners, fullback that they used to have in Zonka. And consequently, they've been throwing the ball more, and, and they just have to give up the ball more often. Of course, when you give up the ball, that means that the, the team that's playing against you can score more often. It's as simple as that. They can't control it. That makes sense. <laughs> Seifel punts. Colsey, the single safety, and Seifel gets off a bad kick. The ball will be down at the 37-yard line. Good field position for Oakland on a 29-yard cycle punt. We'll be back in the Orange Bowl with 9.47 remaining in the third quarter after this. Innsbruck, Austria, site of the 1976 Winter Games, where Goodyear took an American car over icy mountain roads to demonstrate the ice traction of a totally new kind of winter tire, the Goodyear F32 All-Winter Radio. A tire that works on ice and hard-packed snow without metal studs. We call it the Ice Radio. It's made with an amazing rubber compound that stays flexible even at temperatures below zero. So flexible it can conform to the icy surface of the road. It also has a unique tread design with hundreds of gripping edges for ice. Deep traction bars for snow. Plus Flex 10 belts for strength and long radial mileage. So get a hold on winter with an alternative to metal studs. Get the ice radio. Only from Goodyear. Gifford, along with Howard Cosell and Alex Karras with 9.47 remaining in the third quarter from the Orange Bowl in Miami, where the Oakland Raiders lead the Miami Dolphins 17-7. This program being brought to you as a special exclusive of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds and allow our local stations along the line to identify themselves. The Oakland Raiders have a first and ten. They'll begin operation from their own 37-yard line. They at one time had a 17-0 lead. Two Banizak touchdowns in the first half, a 25-yard field goal, and here's Banizak again, and not getting the yardage he got in the first half. It's about a yard. Miami came back with a typical Miami drive of 74 yards, shortened the lead to 17 to 7, and that's where we are at the moment. What appeared to be a runaway, runaway has now settled back to a seesaw battle. Well, it's simple because that front four of Miami is starting to take over a little bit, and there isn't anything you can teach those guys during the halftime. They physically have to get to the ball clear. They physically have to beat up the guy in front of them. It's a very simple task if they want to do it. Second down and nine. Fabler goes to Hart on the screen. And Hart gets the first down and more, moving into Miami territory. 15-yard pickup. Hart going out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Taken out of bounds there by Curtis Johnson. Harold Hart, 11th round pick last year. Real surprise. I think the fans have uh, 
read and heard enough about the recent strike in the National Football League. And I think they know that management's proposal was placed before the players early today. What the eventual outcome will be, management did offer some concession. It remains to be seen if a whole new hassle will begin. On first down, Stabler. Looking over the middle where he had success in the first half for Cliff Branch. Branch having trouble staying on his feet tonight. He slipped and fell again. Well, we're talking about our artificial turf, and when they brought in artificial turf, it was supposed to take care of things like that. It was supposed to make it an even game because you wouldn't slip as much. <laughs> There's an example right there. It's he wouldn't like have caught that nice. anyway. This is not one of your better surfaces as artificial surfaces go. It's been known to be slippery in the past. As a matter of fact, the Miami Dolphins have not lost a game here in 31 times out. Going all the way back to 1971 of the New York Jets. One second down. Here he comes, Jess Phillips. And Phillips. <laughs> he can run. A bucking Bronco to the 25-yard line. Finally, Byrne Denherter makes the tackle in pursuit. They are just chewing up yardage now against this Miami team. Frank mentioned Miami hadn't lost here in 31 times out. On the other side of the coin, Oakland has lost its last five opening games all away from home. But there's a time for everything. And I talked to Jess Phillips about the idea of the New Orleans peddling him, and uh, he said they went in the office and the guy said that you know he was looking for younger ball players. This guy's only been in the league eight years, and I think he's terrific. The first down at the 25. And getting the call now is Van Egan. And the second year youngster from Colgate inside the five yard line. Finally stopped by Curtis Johnson. Mark what? Van Egan, who broke a couple of Marv Hubbard's records at Colgate. Boy, did that offensive Oakland line blow them out. Wow. Well, what's so bad again Shell is that the Bella and Beeler and Upshaw. They're knocking the line right back into the linebackers, and they can't, they can't help out at all. It's just, a, it's just a, a real mess in the middle right now. It's confusion going on. First and goal. The ball just short of the three-yard line. The two tight ends in for Oakland. Moore and Casper. Van Egan gets the call again. The attorney well, for the defense, Howard. That fellow with the head bowed is Nick Bonacani, number 85. Practicing barrister. Great middle linebacker for so many years. And in personal agony, you see the cast on the thumb that was broken that sidelined him. And I mentioned under the 43-man roster limit. Shula felt compelled to put him on injured reserve, which means he's out for the year. It's tough for a guy like that to sit and watch, just as it's tough for Jim Otto, who said today he felt like his life was over. Second and goal, Van Egan scores. A Mark Van Egan touchdown. This drive had, coming up to the last scoring play, had consecutive games of 15, 22, and 21. And Van Egan has just gone in from the two-yard line. They made it look easy on that drive, Alex. You know, you're talking about Jim Otto, and it really is funny because I saw him today. He's now the business manager. And instead of talking about the guy he has to play against tonight, he was talking about how much meals have gone up over there at the hotel. We're 18 and at. a half bucks a man for <laughs> dinner last night, he said. He in was the very river. unhappy. Different priorities. <laughs> George Blanda adds the conversion for Oakland. And the Raiders are now out front of the Dolphins 24 to 7. Six minutes and 58 seconds remaining in the third quarter from Miami, where we'll return in just a moment. These are Motorcraft Auto Parts. In tests supervised by an independent testing company, over 6,000 parts like these were installed in fleets of Ford, Plymouth, and Chevy taxis to see how tough the parts really were. After three million tough taxi miles, less than 1% of the parts couldn't take the punishment. When your car needs a battery, oil filter, shock absorbers, or tune-up parts, ask for Motorcraft Quality Auto Parts from Ford. Taxi tested tough. My smock told me I need right guard double protection. My tux told me I need right guard double protection. 
If your clothes don't look and smell fresh, try Right Guard Double Protection Antiperspirant. It's an anti-odor antiperspirant. Helps protect you and your clothes from wetness, stains, and odor. My coat told me I need Right Guard Double Protection. Oh. Your clothes will tell you if you need Right Guard Double Protection. Okay, another beautiful view of the Orange Bowl where Oakland now has a top-heavy 24-7 lead over the Miami Dolphins. A view via our blimp, the Mayflower. And here is the Gifford to pick up with the kickoff. Ray Guy kicking to 86, Freddie Solomon, 22, Mercury Morris. Let's have another look at that touchdown. Once again, the hole is opened, and young Van Egan of Colgate goes in for the score. Imagine one of the most powerful teams in the NFL having two backs on the team from Colgate. The Red Raiders of the Shenango Valley can be joyous about this event. Miami will move from their 20-yard line. Following the touchback, Twilly out to the left, out to the right, and that's more. The setback, Bulash, 31, more. 22. Easy. That's the problem. He gets away from Otis Sister. Out of bounds. Complete to Nat Moore. No. Linesman Burl Toller gave an indication that it did appear that it was caught out of bounds, but now. He caught it at the 33-yard line, a 13-yard pickup and a first down. And let's look at Nat Moore working against Skip Thomas. Here's Thomas looking back as Greasy got in trouble, and there he is all alone. And that's the reason Jack Tatum hit him. He came down out of bounds. Here comes Manny Sistrong doing a good job rushing. He's, he's getting held a little bit. He's waltzing with his guard. Larry Little's doing a pretty, he did a pretty good job. Larry Little did a pretty good job on Sistrong at that time. Didn't hold him. First down for Miami. Murphy Morris. Morris goes out to the 37-yard line, just short of the 38. A gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Frank, this Saturday, ABC's Wide World of Sports has a very special show. Ali against Frazier. Super fight one, the classic battle in 71. And then the avenging battle. The first one won by Frazier, the second by Ali in 74. Plus, via the satellite, live, the weigh-in of the two. Some 48 hours before Super Fight 3. That's ABC's Wide World of Sports this Saturday. Second down and six. Morris, Murphy Morris, and Morris gets the first down and a couple more. Moving out to the is destined to replace Gerald Irons, but Gerald Irons is a pretty good customer to replace. Gerald Irons is a very good linebacker, and of course he's from Gary, Indiana, which I hail from, and uh, a great representative from that city, and uh, incidentally my brother Teddy is going to be a councilman in Gary, so that's quite a deal. And Gary, Indiana was a famous song from the Music Man. Where do we go from that? First oh, singing later. Miami moving. They trail 24-7. Fully in motion. Hand off to Bulas. Bulas over midfield, down to the 47 yard line, hit by Phil Villapiano. Well, they're putting some life into the game with this drive, the Dolphins are. Greasy and Trumbull scrambling, set it up with a saving pass to Nat Moore. We've got an injury on the field. Who is that gift? Can you tell? I can't see for the moment. One of the defensive lineman appears to be Kelvin Corver, number 71. The number one draft choice of Al Davis a few years back from Northwestern of Iowa. Filling in tonight for Art Toms, number 80. You know, and Toms has come in, come into the ball game. He has a full muscle. Oakland came into this game with only 16 defensive ball players. So they can afford to lose none of their defensive players. We'll be back in just a moment. When the sun goes down and you catch the last wave of the afternoon and take that long, sweet ride home, none of the wipeouts seem to matter. 
now comes Miller time. Time to look back on all the big ones of the day with the best tasting beer you can find. America's quality beer, Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. In Sweden, the simple pleasures mean more to a man, like bourbon-flavored Borkum Riff, a softer, milder smoke that could only have come from Sweden, Borkum Riff, one of life's simple pleasures. Calvin Carver, the defensive tackle, being helped to the Oakland Raiders bench, it appeared that he had hurt his left knee. There he is, Calvin, third-year man at Northwestern College in Iowa. He's been replaced out there by Art Toms, and Art Toms, the Raiders were hoping, would not have to play tonight because he has a very badly pulled muscle. Second down and four. The ball is at the 47. minded here, Frank. Well, they are when they're ahead. <laughs> <laughs> They'll threaten your life if they're not on the halftime highlight. <laughs> you should know, having <laughs> left Miami, Miami out so many times a couple of years ago. Had nothing to do with it. <laughs> There's the measurement. Our Tom's obscuring our view, but referee Jim Tunney indicating about six inches. Let me tell you, I know of Alex's affection for 60 Otis Sistrunk, but in my book, Art Tom's number 80 out of Syracuse, who took several years to develop, has become the outstanding defensive lineman on Oakland and one of the very best in the National Football League. Tremendous football player. That's okay. I'll tell Otis about it, Howard. You figure it out. I'll get Ali. Don't worry me. On third down. He used the Nashville song. Johnson for the extra yardage. 351 remaining in the third quarter. Now you watch Tom's, the guy that uh, Howard was talking about. He is doing what we call the thing, uh, hiding his head in the dirt. And consequently, what happens when you do that is the back runs right over you. Now that is not a great play, uh, Howard. Yeah, Otis didn't do that. No, Otis does. He dances. First down is at the 39 yard line. Play action fake. Greasy in trouble again. Tries to go to Twilly. The ball batted away. Greasy's news was good pressure by the Oakland Raider front four. Now it's their regular defensive unit they'd like to have. Wasn't Art Toms is in there, not healthy, but he's in there with Horace Jones, Otis Sistrunk, and Tony Klein. Wasn't that 26, Skip Thomas, who uh, knocked that pass down? Nice play. Uh, one of four USC nice play. Trojans playing for the Oakland Raiders. There's the good pressure. Tony Klein just missing. Yep, there's Skip Thomas. Old Skip Peru. He took some time to develop, too, but he's come around. Six interceptions last year as he really came into his own. Second down at 10. Wayne Moore, the offensive left tackle for the Miami Dolphins, jumping offsides. The offensive linemen, of course, cannot break their stance. Once they take their three-point stance, they cannot move. There he is, Wayne Moore. Well, he, he was getting a little nervous because Tony Klein is really putting the outside pressure on him, and uh, he, he was just a little apprehensive about Tony Klein's great off, outside rush. I can see that once in a while. Get a little tight in there. Second down, now in 15. Bob Grazy. 
He's been sacked three times tonight as we take a look at Jake Scott. He's had his problems injury-wise. Great safety man for the Dolphins. You see he's gone down three times attempting to pass with a loss of 29 yards. interesting because the heat begins to take its toll more and more and Miami is so accustomed to it even training in it during the summer. On third down. Lulash as the flag goes down. Lulash was close to a first down but the flag is down. Too much time. Bad. Going against Miami. Bad, bad for a veteran and poised quarterback normally like Bob Greasy. Bad. We have just been told that Corver will not return to the game tonight, but we do not have an in-depth report on the injury, the extent of the injury to his left knee, so we will not speculate, but Kelvin Corver is out of the wall game. Tom's number 80 is in, replacing him. So Bob Greasy has been taken out of a possible run for the first down, put into the passing position. Larry Seifel is now in at one wide receiver. He's playing in the slot with Larry Seifel. Basically, Miami has four deep receivers in the ball game. Complete to Matt Moore, first down. Beautiful pass, beautiful catch. Fumbled just for a second, but not really fumbled. The ball thrown high, not leaping for it, popping it to the air and then corralling it again. There it is. There you saw it. And he had all day to pass the ball. And of course, that's the result of it. If you, if you give Bob Brisi enough time, he's going to complete him. 16-yard pickup. The ball just short of the 20-yard line. Miami back into their regular throw offense. Nottingham and Bulash. Now are the two sets. 36, Bulash 31. Oh, Bulash. 220 pounds that when he was at Texas A&M traveled in 9,600. We've talked about him before, and the NFL fans are thoroughly familiar with his history by now. He has enormous power, enormous speed when healthy. Frank mentioned the concussions that caused steady dizziness last year. Also, a steadiness of muscle pulls. The man is 220 pounds of muscle. Limping a little as he came out there. Stronger even, I think, than Gift. And a whole lot bigger. <laughs> Is the weight well at 220 pounds just short of the first down it'll be second down clock moving with 150 showing Rickery Morris is back in now with Nottingham Morris 22 Nottingham 36 this is fully in motion Morris gets the first down moving inside the 10 to the 9 Miami with another sustained drive. And they can make it a ball game if they can get on the scoreboard. But Oakland showing a lot of power. Greasy up to the line of scrimmage with another first down. First and goal, the ball at the nine. for Howard 
Willie could not hold on. Don Chula. His team hurt last year at the loss of Zonka, Warfield, and Kick. Decimated during the preseason. I guess is the proper word for the injuries that some of his key players have suffered. Five players who started against the Oakland Raiders in the AFC playoff a year ago are not in the lineup tonight. Second and goal. Nottingham spinning and twisting. He's inside the five. Nottingham tackled there by Toms in pursuit. Still leaves Greasy with a problem. The ball will be marked just short of the third yard, three yard line, and it's third down. It leaves him with a big problem, Frank. Do you pass or do you run on this down, Gift? Well, they have some high priced ball players as far as backs are concerned. I think if they have three, three only three yards, let them run it and see if they can't pick up three for $65,000 a piece. I pass. Make the first down is third and goal. Go to Greasy. Greasy. Twilly caught the ball, had to come out of the end zone to catch it. Howard Twilly, with good coverage by Willie Brown, had to come out of the end zone. Brown was all over Twilly. They mark it just about a foot from the goal line. Okay, first down. Four to seven. I know we will not see a premium. And that's the end of the first quarter. The end of the third quarter here in Miami. The Dolphins a foot away from a touchdown with fourth down. We'll be back in the Orange Bowl right after this. The hilarious Welcome Back Cotter tomorrow night at 8.30, 7.30 Central. Runs like this one helped me lead the Raiders in rushing for the fourth consecutive year. That was a great moment for me, but I'd like to tell you the story of Betty Jacks that involves some other great moments. Betty was a victim of cerebral palsy, and for seven years she depended on the United Way home health aides to help her on a daily basis. She never forgot that care, which was received when she needed it the most. Today, Betty volunteers to help others. Thanks to you, it works for all of us, the United Way. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. Fifteen minutes of regulation play scheduled for the Orange Bowl here in Miami. The Miami Dolphins have a fourth down. The ball has now been placed inside the one-yard line. Howard Twilley caught a third down pass from Gracie. He was in the end zone, had to come out. So the pressure is on the Miami Dolphins. They need this touchdown desperately. Bulash gets the call, and he gets into the end zone. Oh, he did it on sheer individual power. And they should have had it two plays ago, in my opinion. Don Chula looks on as the Dolphins are back in the football game. upset probably by the call that of the completion from Gracie to Twilly here's Gary Apremian good for the Oakland Raiders now lead the Miami Dolphins 24 to 14 
let's look at that pass play that's caused at least some concern by uh, on the part of Don Schul and yours true. There's Greasy moving to his left, throwing the twelve. That's going to be hard to tell, but you can understand Schul is caused that pushed back by the tackler. So it's questionable. Okay. It's a tough one. We'll grant that. Now let's look at the touchdown play. Big boo. Bossing. Look, being thrown back and then pushing his way over two men. Sheer individual power. Just good running by Norm Bulash, who was the key factor in that drive of 80 yards by the Miami Dolphins. Carrier premium will kick off deep. Harold Hart, 34. Just Phillips, 35. just for you. Stretching out in glory, This is spirit you'll find only in the friendly skies. Come along, sing the song. More people choose United, Mother Country's favorite airline. The friendly skies of your land, United Airlines. Have a good trip. Nice talking to you. minutes and 37 seconds remaining in the third rather the fourth and final quarter from Miami and Harold Hart has just gone 101 yards for the open Raiders well look at that stat boy that's revealing the Dolphins need special team work Ray guy put in it this will be Freddie Solomon at the five Solomon out over the 25, out to the 26. Lewis Carter down there to make the stop for Oakland. Little Freddie Solomon would not duplicate Hart's spectacular run. Hart, who had been told to stay in the end zone by the other deep man, Jess Phillips, hesitated, stepped back in, then realized he couldn't. I love the way the Garl way he went. Did you see Garl try to chase him down the sidelines there? He didn't know what to do with him if he caught up with him for crying out loud. He wouldn't know what to do with him. Down Miami. And Bob Gracie will have to unlimber the arm if they are to have any 
any hope here tonight. This drunk with the pressure of the screen pass to Bulash. Bulash slips as he crosses the 30-yard line. It'll be a gain of six, second down and four. Frank, I am advised that President Ford is on his way back to Washington now. And, of course, in the light of the threat upon his life today, we'll be cutting back and forth with our news people, ABC, to keep you up to date. Developments. President's return to the national camp. All right, second down and four. The ball at the 32-yard line. Mercury Morris on the quick toss. And Monty Johnson coming over from middle line backing. Makes the stop after Willie Brown comes up from his cornerback spot. Loss of a yard. <laughs> this girl, number one jersey. I don't think he's a number one tackler, though. He's an old teammate of yours. Yes, Detroit was not Alex. He Back played the first two years with us, and he didn't, didn't really, didn't really know what the extra point and uh, field goal, how much it was worth. He really didn't. He thought field goals were four points. Down and six. Ball at the 32. The setbacks are Seipel, Winfrey, good receivers in the passing situation. Crazy throws to Nat Moore, is behind him, and Nat Moore pays the price of receivers coming over the middle. Collected there by Monty Johnson. Fourth down, Miami. Out comes the punting unit. Oakland at this point must be feeling very good. The jinx of the past, five straight losing opening games. Oakland this year has one of the easier schedules in the NFL. Their two toughest remaining games, and I know we're just beginning, but as I scan the schedule, appear to be Cincinnati and Washington. Larry Seipel, single safety, Neil Colsey. Beautiful kick that backs Colsey all the way to his 20. Trying for the picket line. He will not get there. Steve Toll down there quickly. 48-yard punt. Seven-yard return. We'll return to Miami in just a moment. Metropolitan Life takes you back to a time when you were very young and the future was far away. Thank you, sir. Do I look sophisticated enough? Oh, yes, honey, yes. You look sophisticated enough. Oh, I'm so Come on. nervous. Is Wendy ready? You gonna wear that? It's for you. Remember the rented tux and the corsages that ended up pressed between the pages of a diary? Somehow years have passed since then. And if this seems like only yesterday, imagine how soon tomorrow will be here. At Metropolitan Life, we help you get ready for the future before it arrives. With insurance for your kids' education, for your own retirement, for your future. See your Metropolitan representative. Because if this seems like only yesterday, can the future be far away? Metropolitan, where the future is now. Frank Gifford, along with Howard Cosell and Alex Karras in the Orange Bowl of Miami. First game for the Miami Dolphins, first game for the Oakland Raiders, and the Raiders have been awesome in every respect. They lead 31 to 14. They have a first and 10. Kenny Stabler going all the way at quarterback. Hands off to Mark Van Egan, who has performed well the second year man from Colgate. He gets a couple of second and eight. Hi there. Recognize this fella? Sure, you remember Star, Star Trek, now the number one man in our new series on Monday nights, Barbary Coast. Bill Shatner, of course. Good to have you aboard. Oh, I, I uh, was enjoying the game until that run back, and then that really ripped him apart. Barbary Coast comes on in most parts of the country just before this game, so we're telling the folks, watch next week. But on the West Coast, watch it after Monday night football. Okay. How's it going? It's going well. I'm glad the throws are working. We've got a fumble, so Mark, we'll get back to you later. Mark right. Van Egan gave up the football on the fumble. We may have a game yet, Bill Jack. Randy Crowder made the recovery. First and ten for Miami. They trail 31 to 14. 
Let's take a look at it again. Mark Van Egan. He scored for the Oakland Raiders a few moments ago. And Miami has a first and ten. They're at Oakland's 32-yard line. Nottingham and Mercury Morris are the setbacks. Coming up with the interception, Willie Brown, as the ball was overthrown. Intended for Nat Moore. Otis Sistrunk, as he has been all night in the offensive backfield of the Miami Dolphins. You know, old Greasy's just not having his uh, regular night out there. And, no, uh, that could have been a touchdown. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what his problem is. Maybe, maybe he's, uh, you know, a little leery of the fact that uh, he doesn't. He isn't even throwing those swing passes like he normally does. He's only nine for twenty for 112 yards, and that's not a good day for Greasy. No, but maybe he's human. <laughs> Second down. Stan Winf Winfrey, number 33, is in there. The rookie from Arkansas State. Round draft pick. He has a lot of speed, as does Mercury Morris. Nat Moore. Nat Moore gets the first down as the flag goes down at the line of scrimmage. Uh oh. Nat Moore with another clutch catch, but again, a flag is down at the line of scrimmage. The discussion with Bob Gracie would indicate that. The penalty will be against the Raiders, which it is, and you saw Bob Greasy nodding to referee Jim Tunney. No, we'll take the play. Personal foul, called against Oakland, declined. Well, it occurred after the reception, so therefore the penalty is tacked on. There was the reception, uh, another fine catch by Nat Moore. There's the personal foul indicated against Oakland. Jones picked up the personal foul. The penalty tacked on after the completion. So Miami has a first and goal. They trail 31 to 14. They say that Mike Twilley, Twilley fell down, Greasy will have to run. And a flag goes down in the end zone. We could have pass interference. Trying to get open in the end zone. Tony Klein was pressuring Gracie. There it is. Ball going against Oakland. I think it's an illegal chucking call that's going to go against the Raiders. Greasy again. The option's being explained. have another look at this, Alex, especially our young friend from Bowling Green, Phil Villapiano. Well, number 41, Phil Villapiano, we've talked about him a lot of times and his versatility on the football field. He can go, you know, wide and, and come in and make the tackle on the inside. And we'll, get, we'll get to him in just a minute. All illegal use of hands against Howard Twilley, Atkinson, the defensive safety man of Oakland, the guilty Oakland Raider. First and goal, the football. Mercury Morris dropped it, but he came back up with it. Don Shula is looking concerned as well he should. As John Madden, he always looks concerned. A lot of things got to happen very fast for Miami to get back in this game. They need this touch. They need another quick break of turnover. Bob, Bob Greasy will drive you crazy close to the goal line because you don't know if he's going to pass on first down like he did this time or run it, and he drives you absolutely nuts as far as the defense is concerned. We don't know what he's going to do when you're a defensive ball player. Second down, the ball inside the two. Come 
finish in here in the Orange Bowl. Up and over, Giffer. That's the way to get in when you're in that tight. Garrow, your premium, drops out. He will try to bring the Dolphins to within 10. Earl Morrow will hold. Dolphins moving 32 yards in five plays. The Oakland Raiders 31. We'll be back in Miami in just a moment. Ford Motor Company announces a dramatic increase in its average gas mileage rating for 1976 cars over 1975. Based on estimated EPA sales weighted figures, we project an average rating increase of 27%. An increase of 27% in just one year. Of course, some individual gains were not as dramatic as this average since their big improvements were made in 1975 models, like our MPG cars introduced in June. Remember, these results are estimates based on EPA's combined city highway test. So the actual mileage you get may be different. But this impressive gain in our mileage rating has been accomplished without sacrificing the strength the riding comfort or safety features you expect in cars from Ford Motor Company. See our family of cars with a 27% average mileage rating gain at your Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealers October 3rd. A look from the Goodyear Blimp Mayflower at the Orange Bowl in Miami and not a fan is left as the Miami Dolphins have moved to within 10 of the Oakland Raiders. The Raiders have nine men close to Gowry Yepremian, who's kicking off. They're obviously anticipating an onside kick. They do not get it. And Yepremian puts it in and out of the end zone, touchback. Harold Hart was the lone safety for Oakland. But he will not get an onside kick with 10.33 remaining. And there's the touchdown. Mercury Morris going up and over. Jack Tatum was there, could do nothing. Defensive unit is getting the chairs of the Dolphin fans. They want to, excuse me, Frank. They got to get the ball back. They know it. And that front four is really going to have to scramble now and physically try to beat up that team and get the ball back. Kenny Stabler, who has completed eight passes tonight to eight different receivers. of yards, it'll be second and eight. On the other side, LeCoyne, I wouldn't recommend that Oakland get too conservative in its play, Alex. It can find itself suddenly having to get rid of the football. Well, if, you, if you're going to go run it two downs and have third down and seven to go and then start to throw the ball, an interception could occur and the game could switch right around again. Cliff Branch and Mike Siani are the two wide receivers for Oakland. Second down and eight. The ball at the 22. Banizak. The crowd goes crazy as Banizak is thrown for a loss by Randy Crowder and Tim Foley. Uh, Tim Foley got in there beautifully then. There he is, Tim Foley. You don't hear much about him, but he always is around the ball. Young man from Purdue. Highly intelligent fellow. Steady player. Third down now for Stabler. That's John Madden. 9.24, the clock is moving in the fourth and quarter of the game from Miami. First game for both ball clubs. Both heavily favored in their division. Gene Upshaw, the left guard, says, I cannot hear. Very happy crowd. As Miami appears to be moving again, although they still are 10 points away. Frank Gifford along with Alex Harris and Howard Cosell live from Miami. This is what you would call a nonpartisan crowd. <laughs> Speaking of live, Howard Cosell again will be live Saturday night, live with Howard Cosell. Alex Harris will be there. He'll be out in San Diego with the Eagles live this Saturday night. And Balboa Stadium. Red Fox, another great cast. Linda Ronstadt. 
Wayne. All Saturday night with Howard live. Saturday night live with Howard Cassell. Great show last Saturday. Okay. Crowd hopefully has calmed down a little. Third and ten. Picks up in the backfield and Hart maybe gets a yard. Tell me they're not excited. <laughs> well, one oh. mistake by Miami, Frank, and you'll hear boos. <laughs> well, they paid a lot of money to get in here. I don't like to see Oakland doing what they're doing right now, Frank. They're a little too conservative for me. Uh, maybe they figure their defense can stop uh, Miami, but all they need is a touchdown. They're right back in the ball game. I agree with you. Shades of last year, the Raiders of Buffalo, and what a dramatic finish that was. 21-20 win for Buffalo. And okay, Ray Guy is going to punt for Oakland. Deep is Freddie Solomon. Charlie Babb is up short. Babb bobbles the ball, and Solomon saves it at the 39-yard line. Oh, and you heard the breath escape from these 80,000 screaming fans. We've got eight minutes, 11 seconds to go. The Dolphins have 10 points to make up. The Raiders 31, the Dolphins 21. The Dolphins trailing all night, apparently listless and out of the game after Harold Hart erupted for a kickoff return of 101 yards to increase the lead of the Raiders at the time, the 17. But the Dolphins recovered a fumble, the fourth Oakland turnover of the game, moved in for the score, 31-21. The Dolphins must move and move fast to have a chance for it. Wow. <laughs> Get all that, Alec. Here, here. <laughs> all right. First and ten from the 39-yard line. End the round. This is Nat Moore. Nat Moore, and you don't trick the Oakland Raiders often. Tony Klein was there, 84. Art Tom's 80. A pickup of two. It'll be second down and eight. Time already a factor because the Dolphins need two scores, not one. Too much time can't be spent on the ground, yet Greasy will want to keep the Raiders honest in both directions. Tough situation, especially against a team so good as the Raiders. Another good year blimp shot of the jam-packed Orange Bowl of Miami. And Larry Seipel has been sent in by Don Chula to give Bob Greasy an extra passing receiver. He's a good one. Back at the, my, my, at the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida, we've got 5.35 to go. Raiders 31, Dolphins 21. Penalty has just been imposed against the Oakland Raiders. It's third down, two to go. The ball on the Raiders 38. The Miami Dolphins with the ball, desperately trying to get back into the game. And here is the one and only Giffer. And while we were away... Mandage picked up a one first down with a 12 yard reception. As Howard mentioned, his third down. Three yards to go. The ball just short of the 38. The score of the Raiders 31, the Dolphins 21, 535 remaining in the fourth quarter. And it's picked off, deflected, and then picked off by Art Toms. We don't oh, know man. who deflected, but Art Toms made the interception. That's my man, Alex. Well, he should have never been around the football. He should have been way back in the quarterback, and he was right on the line of scrimmage and knocked it down, Howard. Golly gee. That isn't where he's supposed to be playing. I found it a most felicitous position at that moment. Let's look at it again. Gracie going to the air on third down. And it was Art Toms who deflected it. And then pursued the ball and came up with the interception. A super play by Art Toms. And the man in front of Art Toms was the best center in the NFL, 62, Jim Langer, which makes it even more so. Time now becoming a serious factor for the Dolphins. Clock moving, 5-24. There's Art Toms. He was not expected to play. They did not want to play. Carver started, Kelvin Carver. He hurt his knee, went out, and Art Toms, with a badly pulled muscle, has played a superb football game. Frank, by the way, to Hi, guys. Sh show the fans the kind of night Greasy's been having. He's 12 for 26 with two interceptions. 
Gained 141 yards through the air. Second down and four. Banizak. Over the 45 to the 46. It'll be third down and one. Banizak having a nice evening. He replaced the injured Marv Hubbard. He's had 64 yards on the night. Against the Miami Dolphins, that's not bad. Thank heavens the president is back in the national capital, having landed at the Andrews Air Force Base, and you've all just seen our cutaway to the president upon his return, and of course, Harry Reisner of ABC News. Third down. Banizak. And twisting and turning to midfield, getting the first down, Pete Banizak. This Saturday, ABC Sports again will bring you NCAA college football with four exciting regional games, North Carolina State at Michigan State, Illinois at Texas A&M, Maryland at Kentucky, and San Jose State against Stanford. Stanford, of course, with that, well, I guess you could call it a great tie against Michigan because they were really the underdogs in that one. Illinois, of course, led Missouri at the halftime before finally losing that one. Regional NCAA college football coming up Saturday and be sure and check your local listing for the game that you will see in your area. Ball right at midfield. Jess Phillips over the right side and he just gets back to the line of scrimmage. You know, Jim Foley moving up from his cornerback spot. The fates of an athletic career are really so strange and twisting and often perilous. Things you don't read about, perhaps, in the eastern part of the country or even hear about. Pete Banasak, number 40, has had a great evening here tonight. Yet two weeks ago, it was an open secret that Oakland was ready to trade him. Instead, they had to let Charlie Smith go, as we told you earlier. Because of Ban Banizak's great versatility. Gift. Mark Van Egan. Ooh. And Mark Van Egan running well tonight. The Oakland Raiders with seven running backs still on their roster. First down for the Oakland Raiders after tonight. Oakland will play, of course, two games each with the teams in their division over the season. Denver, Kansas City, and San Diego. Also, they're going to play Cleveland, Baltimore, Cincinnati, and Houston of the AFC. And then from the NFC, they'll play New Orleans and Atlanta. Next week, they go up the East Coast. They'll meet Baltimore, while Miami will be up in New England. Here's Jess Phillips. Come with the football. Miami has the ball. Puck stopped with two minutes and eight seconds. So don't go away. John Andrews. John Andrews, and he is, well, I thought he was shaking up for a moment. But John Andrews came up with the football for Miami. Two minutes and eight seconds. Let's look at it again. Phillips turning the corner. Goes down, really, tripping over his own man, number 63, Gene Upshaw. So Miami has the job. They have two minutes and eight seconds. They need a touchdown. Villapiano, a gain of 18, and there is the two-minute warning. Raiders 31, Dolphins 21, two minutes remaining, we'll be back. Eddie, you got a razor for this wire? Yeah. And one for this fuzz? Prima Donna's. The same razor? Sure. Track two razors, but with adjustable cartridges. There are five settings. You use high, you low. And you'll both get that great Track 2 shave. The Gillette Track 2 razor with regular or adjustable cartridges. The closest thing to a perfect shave. Eddie, terrific shave. 25 prima donnas, one great razor. Cricket lighter is really quite a light. It'll last for months and still burn bright. Who 
Ooh. It's not easy being America's favorite disposable lighter. You've got to be dependable, adjustable, and most of all, you've got to be packed with thousands of lights. Uh, cricket, you missed one. Oh, no. Get thousands of surefire lights. Catch a Cricket lighter by Gillette. Here's John Andrews, a rookie in the NFL. Played with Birmingham last year in the WFL. Before that, he had been up in Canada a couple of years. He had been drafted number seven by Detroit a few years ago. Very happy youngster looking on as Miami tries to get back into the football game. That's the fifth Oakland turnover. Okay. Ball at the 45-yard line. Three timeouts remaining for Miami. to Bulash and Bulash gets maybe a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Skip Thomas has played a fine football game, a defensive cornerback for Oakland up there to make the stop. Ball resting just short of the 43-yard line for Miami. Willie out to the left, Matt Moore to the right. Crazy putting both backs out. Going to Mercury Morris. Now, Seipel will come in, giving Bob Greasy that extra receiver coming out of the backfield. Seipel, a real fine athlete. Well, as the game nears its end, Frank, it's time to look ahead. It's only the first game of the season. There'll be many ups and downs for both teams, even for Oakland, as strong as they've looked tonight. But Miami is not a team to be reckoned out of anything because of this loss. They're losing this game to a powerhouse team. They're in a tough division, but they still, I think, should be favorites to win that division. Buffalo will have to be them. Five men, secondary prevent defense by Oakland. Colsey's in there. Greasy has net more wide open. And good recovery by Neil Colsey, the number one draft pick. Neil Colsey, and what a recovery he made because Nat Moore was deep behind both Atkinson and Colsey, and that's why Colsey was the great All-American that he was at Ohio State. Watch him accelerate. Ball thrown just a little behind, but not that poorly thrown, and fine recovery by Colsey. His momentum carried him into the end zone. The ball will be marked at the three-yard line. There he is. Played in three straight Rose Bowls for Ohio State, as did the number two draft pick of the Oakland Raiders. That, of course, Charles Phillips. Phillips from USC. And he is <laughs> delighted. That a way to go, Neil. 15 interceptions at Ohio State. We'll be in Denver next Monday night. The pack against the Broncos, and the Broncos always give you an exciting game. Abler hands off to Mark Egan. You better believe, before he handed off in the huddle, he said, hold on to it. Because Miami will be tackling the football down to one minute. And Miami uses one of their timeouts to stop the clock. John Madden looking on, feeling comfortable with a 10-point lead. We'll be back in a moment. The American worker. Some people have forgotten the craftsmanship he brings to his job. Some say he's not as important as he used to be. Well, to that, we politely answer, bunk. At Zenith, Americans like these produce the color TV that service technicians named more than any other as the one that needs fewest repairs. American workers, Zenith workers, they make sure the quality goes in before the name goes on. Mr. Gleason, here's the loan for your radio station. Five million dollars. And Mrs. Kane, the loan for your dress factory. Two million. And Mr. Cooper, the loan for your family room. Eighteen hundred dollars. Commercial credit thanks you all. Wonder why I'm here with all these big business types? Why not? When I get a loan, I get it from the money experts, too. Need a personal loan? Go where the smart money goes. Commercial credit. Hey, uh, lots of luck with the radio station. One minute remaining in the Orange Bowl for Miami. Uh, some of the people start to leave. They have seen some real interesting football tonight. Miami several times looked like they were battling back into the ball game. 
trail 31 21 with that one minute remaining they have two timeouts and Banizak gets the call again as obviously Ken Staber is working on the clock Miami uses another timeout they have one remaining Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell and Alex Karras seen a powerhouse Oakland Raider team and I think you can understand as you look at the 48 year old wonder <laughs> he played in his 211th consecutive football game tonight Alex yeah, and he set a new record for showers this is 27,397 showers with the guys isn't that an amazing record Frank you know out of a possible 326 games that George could have played in or rather 340 games he played in 326 of them. I, re I played against him when he was a linebacker of the Chicago Bears. I played against him when he was 12 years old. George Blanda. That's, That's Jim big Otto, Jim Otto yeah. now. The, uh... You know, they were tied, too, coming into tonight with 210 consecutive games. Our blimp tonight, the Mayflower was provided by Goodyear, giving us some spectacular shots. 56 seconds. Pete Banizak gets the call, and Miami kills it for the final time. Their last timeout. Our air travel arrangements have been made through, and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United, of course, the airline of the pros. This year, 16 of the 26 NFL teams will enjoy United Friendship Charter Service. down. Gray guy will come out. He'll punt from his own end zone. Obviously, Miami will go for the block. Freddie Solomon is back deep, as is Charlie Babb. Oakland Raiders will stay in the East after tonight. They play Baltimore next Sunday. Miami travels to New England. We, of course, will be in Denver for the Denver Broncos and the Green Bay Packers. And, oh, it was close. Freddie Solomon. And seven Raiders were downfield under that high, towering kick of Ray Guy. So Miami will take over. They have no timeouts remaining. There are 42 seconds remaining in the game. They have never been closer than 10 points after Oakland opened up a 17-0 lead. Again, as Howard mentioned earlier, the Miami Dolphins and the Oakland Raiders are really the cream of the crop in the NFL. So neither one could be counted out of their divisional races. Easy, obviously, will put the ball in the air. Looking over the middle for Moore, and he holds on. He's down to the 22-yard line. To the line of scrimmage and watch the Raiders. They'll take their time. In fact, they'll just saunter back there. And now the referee will stop the clock. Referee Jim Tunney says, Come on, Raiders, you're taking a little bit too much time. Miami, of course, has no more timeouts. Now they'll start the clock. Greasy will probably throw a quick square out, just unloading it, killing the clock. Who has it? Nobody. Thomas in a battle with Howard Twilley or rather Jack Tatum back there clock counting down to 13 seconds on that play and it was ruled an interception Jack Tatum yep. Oakland ends its jinx five straight losses on opening night or day as it were road games and Miami loses a game in the Orange Bowl Fourth interception tonight of Bob Greasy. Al Davis is superstitious, too, because he, he talked to Frank and I before the game, and he was moaning and groaning about his team not being 100%, a lot of injuries, and I think he was trying to tell us that uh, he might lose tonight. Yeah, but there has to be an end even to the miracle of Shula as Frank picks up with the closing play-by-play. -play. It will be the closing play because Miami can no longer stop the clock. How can you lose? Zonka, Kick, Warfield, Dick Anderson, Nick Bonacani. Tonight, Manny Fernandez and Bob Hines and hold together. The 
final score, the Oakland Raiders 31, the Miami Dolphins 21.